guy yeah mm. and he told me that when i was sleeping that he smelled my armpit mm. and i said why did you do that and then he said because basically like if you if somebody that you like if yeah. you can smell their like in their perspiration mm. and you find it attractive that yeah. means that your pheromones are combined or something like that what scientists came up with that do you know what i don't know you know the science the science of google and youtube boy <laughs> wait i think he intentionally just went yeah, or he, he just happened to just be in that position. No, he actually it. smelled. He said he told me I smelled your armpit while I, while you were sleeping, and I was very uncomfortable. The, the, the fact of like, that. Like what he said. What did you want you to say after that? Do you know what? Yeah, why would you even confess that? Like, just keep it to Why yourself. the hell would you confess that? But me, I love I love a nice smelling somebody. Oh no no no! It smells really attract somebody. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like, like when it comes, if it's food or anything, like mm-hmm. it gets your brain like, what is that? And you're like, you like know yeah, you want to know where it mm. is, but I don't like it when, like, like you're just talking about about the the Arab and the ouds. Mm. The ouds smells. It's a bit overpowering. Yeah, sometimes, no, sometimes, you, it's sometimes. Not all of them. But yeah. sometimes, you think it's with perfume. It's either mm. you wear the perfume or the perfume wears you. Yeah, that's There's it. some people like, yeah. for example, like somebody with a powerful demeanor mm. like when they walk in and they're the boss mm. they're the big boy <laughs> they're walking to the scene and they're wearing the yeah, yeah, yeah. like when you're when they're walking by you mm. the whole world can smell them right you're like yeah that's your smell yeah but when you have one neek like this trying yeah. to spray 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 no. it's not the same it's not the it's same, same vibe. get out of here man get out of here go and spray it go and spray your licks africa man get out of here man <laughs> speaking of licks africa mm. i saw something about apparently the love island villa smells yes, like i heard that <laughs> i was like wow <laughs> I could smell that tweet. Do you know it, what? It reminds me of school in the PE. So, so, do you know what's mad, uh, yeah? I'm mm, not going to lie to you. Mm. <sighs> this is going to be so weird, but the day before that came out, yeah. I said mm. that Dami looks like he smells like his house. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not even on you know, no, 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 but you know, you know how some Nigerians like they have a, a they have a smell. smell. They it's not a perfume, smell. but it's, it's like, like a, they have a smell of their house. Yeah. like not gonna lie. When I was younger, yeah, mm. people people don't know that they have house smells. Yeah. When I was younger, I realized I had a house smell because mm. I, there was this mixed race girl. She was Jamaican, mm. and it, <laughs> <laughs> she came to my house yeah, one yeah, day. Yeah. 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 And then um, she came to my house over the weekend. Yeah. And then when we came back to school, she mm. was like, oh my God, Joyce. She was like, oh, when I went home, I smelled like you. And I said, oh, what does, I was what like, what is it? Like, what yeah. do you mean it smells like me? She goes, yeah. I don't know, I can't explain. It's like your house smells like Africa. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say though, a lot of Africans have a certain smell. They do. But in my house, the thing is with my mum, uh-huh. like she was born in the UK. Yeah. yeah. But she has got Nigerian blood in it. Uh-huh. So, Literally, when my mom's clean, she's like, we cannot be smelling like a Nigerian house. Like, she would get, like, Lenore or something. Because yeah. it's, it's an, some Nigerian houses have a really bad, pleasant smell. Yeah, it's like, it's and like, it's too oil, too palm oil, or, palm oil. or something. And um, what's that, what's that seed called that you put in the Eferiro? Is it Iru? Um, Lock Iru! Locust beans! Locust oh, that beans. smells! Like, ah, Yay! Wait, like, tastes good. It tastes good, but, but some people smell like Iru. No, like, I'm really like, It's actually really bad. My sister, yeah, she's so annoying because mm. she hates that smell, like, mm. because imagine, like, like when we're growing up going to school yeah like my mum will hang the clothes in yeah. the kitchen she'll now fry right. fish okay. she'll now be frying <laughs> tilapia fish so when you get to school now your uniform is not smelling like fishmonger like a fishmonger do you drive soon in jesus name no, <laughs> honestly, saying that. soon in jesus name honestly i heard it gets difficult every year you do the test but i okay. need to get it done you know what it is it's think of it a bit like gcse like the, mm-hmm. the questions change slightly but a lot of it is I won't say basic knowledge because obviously mm-hmm. some of the things that are in the test, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> but I would say that it's similar in in some sense, but mm-hmm. it's not a drastic change. But this year they've definitely changed a lot because they said they want to prioritize ro- uh, horse riders and pedestrians more. Why are we still riding horses in this fucking <laughs> country? Nah, seriously. <laughs> like what? Listen, this is the problem with England. Yeah, they what they love to do pres- preservation too of heritage much too much. For things that Leave don't... the fucking horses so in the stables. <laughs> like why? Po- Honestly, why are police still right? The no, it doesn't make sense. Actually, it doesn't. doesn't make any sense. When you think about it, it makes no it sense. Make sense. The horse is slowing down the slowing traffic. Down. On top of that, it's even pooing on the roadside. Do you know what I mean? Then you will have to use taxpayer money to go and yeah. call the bin people to, to be go going to and collect brush, it. Brushing the fucking. But you know what it is? Poo, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced that those people who are on the police thing, they're not. Obviously, I know they are policemen, but they're yeah. not the ones on job and duty for like crimes. So they're just there for vibes. Just there, just for the vibes, for the ambience of London. Because I swear to you, for real, I don't Jesus believe that when there's Christ. a criminal on the loose, they'll be doing giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, <laughs> let's go. I do not believe it. I don't believe it. I'm, 
Do you know what? I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually quite interested now. T- when I think about it, what mm. the fuck do those horses people do? I don't because I, I, so, you see them at like Westminster, London Bridge. Yeah, I feel like for tourists, it'd be like, oh yeah, that's nice, but. Get out of the road. Get out of the road. There are real crimes. You are in the way. We are already (laughs) congested, child. We are already tied in this London. Honestly, these, obviously, you drive, Mm. but me, that's a pedestrian walking on the street. These um, strikes have killed me. No, honestly, the strikes... They've killed me. I saw a video on Twitter, and it was, I don't know where it was in London, but it was Mm -hmm. like a bus that, and someone was walking past and filming, and everyone was squashed. Squashed at the Elizabeth line. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm a conspiracy theorist, yeah? Because how is it that on the biggest strike mm. day on the UK, yeah. every single train yeah. line is closed except our good sis Elizabeth. Mm. But you, that, that's actually something to think about. Because that's the second time. Because there was mm. another there was another day where all the trains had closed yeah. on the underground yeah. except our good sis Elizabeth. And it happened the day after mm. the Elizabeth line um dropped yeah. uh, launched all of a sudden all the lines are closed and we are now forced to ride the it Elizabeth doesn't make sense. line. I they didn't nah. deliberately. There's I something like behind it. There's something behind it because how come them them in the Elizabeth land didn't want to strike? Yeah. Huh? It's so true. Why did they want to strike but everybody else wanted to strike? There's something behind it. I'm there convinced. is is some there is a spirit behind it. And I'm telling you, <laughs> so it's conspiracy theorists that found Madeline McCran. You yeah. To, you need to you need to find out. Why do you document you? Go and do something. Go and do sense. something. Because honestly, these strikes, you know, I couldn't get home yesterday. I can imagine it was stress. It, it was stress. I mean, somebody dropped me. Hey! <laughs> somebody drove me home. <laughs> but if I didn't have that person to drive me, no, no, me... it's true. Because even one of my friends, she's from Manchester. Oh well, Jesus! She's, she, she's not originally, but she lives there, and she came for a premiere. She was meant to go back home to Manchester, but she just stayed in London for a night because mm-hmm. there was no way of getting back, and she doesn't have anyone in London who like that who drives all the way back to Manchester. So stress, stress. I, I'm telling you, it's uh, people it's who are a, working like retail and all that. They have a lot of explaining to do when they get in. On, do you know, and do you know what's so sad, yeah? Mm. What I hate about it, it's like a chain reaction. When obviously the the, the trains have stopped yeah. running, mm. people cannot get into work. But mm. when you work in real time, working those jobs, they don't fucking care. They, don't care. they would rather they would say if if you like walk to work. Yeah, that's they the want thing. You to it's slave to labor. Work. It's fucking slave labor. No, I remember. No, God. honestly, it's slave labor. Like, is they don't treat you well at all. Like, even above it, I was, I was even emotional about it because I remember I used to before TikTok and stuff. I used to work. Various, various jobs. But one job I remember specifically was, um, you know these zero hour contract jobs? Yes. They cheat you like dirt, as in yeah. like you're a number. Mm-hmm. Like everyone line up, everyone getting an apron and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I was working at this horse racing thing in Ascot once. And they said, okay, everyone pay for your ticket and we'll reimburse you. And um, they said, you need to send your your um, proof of purchase by I think Monday at a certain time of the mm-hmm. day. But I didn't get that email. So I sent it on the Wednesday and they're like, oh, sorry, but you, you didn't respond to us. I said, but I didn't see it. And I, I showed them a screenshot of all my um, my my spam and everything. And mm-hmm. they said they misspelled it. But they said the reason why they couldn't pay me is because they were meant to pay to everybody all on one day. That's not my problem. That's not your fucking problem. I paid about 80 pounds from, I think it was Houston or something. Oh my God. Yeah. And I wasn't getting that back. And there was no way of contacting them because they would not answer. But obviously, good luck to them anyway. I earn more money than they ever would. <laughs> so... Ah! So, it's, it's just like a moment. Let the motherfucking know. This God, Don't you when love he that? loves you, he loves when you. When he loves you so hard. No. Do you know what? I fucking love that. No, you know? I, no, when I say that, I have slaved in this life. It's been I a have lot. a vulnerable moment, yeah. Mm. I used to, when I was in uni, I used to do support work, yeah. Mm. So, I used to do like support work, agency, care, mm. all that stuff. Okay. Oh my days! I can imagine. That, do you know what? Can I just say, anyone? Because there's a, a lot of us girl, a lot yeah. of us girlies are doing support work. A lot yeah, of us yeah. girlies are doing care. Is it like stuff. health and social care stuff? No, like basically, you'll be looking after like people like that have disability. Okay, and elderly as well. Elderly. Yeah, my sister's on that as well. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Do you know what? Yeah, I, I swore to myself I would never <laughs> confess I did that fucking job. But you know what? Yeah, it's cool. I'm a confessor. Yes. Yeah. I got a black man's blood in That's me. It. <laughs> Wait, so you do you help like bathe them and everything? Yeah, you have to yeah, bath the them. Yeah. You have to wipe their bum. Yeah. Story time. So basically, <laughs> I was I was working like you have to in this job you have to work twelve hour shifts in it. You really right. slave yourself. Mm. And I remember when I was um there was like three of us on a ward yeah. and there's like thirty patients. Mm. This, this was in a community hospital. Right. And I was this one fat woman. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> She was Cut in the bed. Out. This one fat woman, yeah. You have you have to be rolling her, rolling her like a <laughs> rolling pin. The woman was so big. Like kneading dough. Like a kneading dough. <laughs> My back was hurting me. But obviously, you want to help the people. And yeah, of course. at the same time, you need to help everybody and mm. the job needs to get done. Mm. The nurses are not doing jack fucking mm. shit, yeah. yeah. They're not doing shit. Mm. 
So I'm so I've now gone to the matron and I'm yeah. like matron like basically I couldn't go for my lunch. Yeah. They were telling me off because I didn't go to my lunch on time, but mm. I hadn't had other things done. Yeah, of course, yeah. There were some people still in bed. Yeah that had not had any sort of yeah. care, personal mm-hmm. care, nothing. Yeah. It's 12 o'clock, B. Mm. I'm going to sacrifice my lunch yeah. to help these people. Yeah. I called the matron now. Mm. The matron now called the nurses. Yeah. There was one Nigerian nurse, that bloody bitch. God, will <laughs> never be well with you, Jesus. Name. She sat down yeah. and I said, you know, I don't feel like the nurses are really helping yeah. with any sort of personal care or anything. Yeah. They're just doing paperwork and classes. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, nurses yeah. will look at this, mm. the, the carers like they're rubbish. Yeah. She was looking at me and she was saying, ah, I don't understand. You didn't like you're here for work. Look how you came. Look at you. Look at I, you. The woman washed me like wow. a rat. Look at you. I told you to do something. You didn't do it. Look at you. Do you look like you're ready for work? Did it huh? just insulting me? The matron now, the matron and the freeness yeah. now ganged up on me. That is, you know, one thing they about Nigerians that I don't like, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. people who are not your family, they genuinely really feel they can talk to you anyhow. She talked and to me like a rag. One, one thing I feel like a lot of Nigerian parents, because a lot of them are parents anyway, mm-hmm. need to like get into their head is that mm-hmm. just because you're older than me mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you should demand any type of respect. respect obviously, for me, yeah. I think it's with me. Obviously, I come from a home where you should respect your elders. Cool. Mm-hmm. And that's just primary. But don't think you can talk to me anyhow and I'm going to literally stand there like one dummy. Be like, like yes, a one now. dummy. Honestly, it's so silly. It's so this, that that whole thing now. I didn't me. Yeah. I purposely make sure to let this auntie know you're not my fucking mm-hmm, mom. Mm-hmm. Now these days I'm I'm levels. But anyway, this is what happened now. Mm. So I now went. I now left yeah. feeling insulted, humiliated. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm looking to God. I'm saying, God, why am I doing mm. this job? How can I be here? Mm. Like treated like a toe rag. Yeah. Somebody started ringing. Mm. Beep, 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 yeah. beep. And I walked to the ward. The guy's like, Oh, sorry, I've made a mess. Oh gosh, I'm thinking. Oh my god. Oh gosh. I'm. Not, uh, he said I need to go to the toilet. I've now taken to the one old man. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've pulled down his trousers. I swear to you, and he's no one. <laughs> like, there was poo all How old is this down. Man? Poo diarrhea. All How old is he? Down. I think he's maybe maybe like seventy. But oh you know god. when by that age, you something <laughs> your capacity, <laughs> your capacity is not that great. Poo all down his leg. Oh my dear. Poo diarrhea all down his leg. As I'm cleaning it, I'm crying. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, this job. I'm not getting paid. I, I, he's as I'm cleaning the poo, I'm crying. As in tears running down my eyes, I'm crying. Do you know what? People who tears. people who do this job, especially with the whole um, crisis with the pay that people are getting as so well. So bad. Like my sister sent me. She sent me a TikTok. My sister the other day, and mm-hmm. like she works for the NHS. Some girl mm-hmm. works for the NHS, and she was saying that she showed her pay, her net pay or whatever, the taxes and all that. I think she earned about maybe like three and a half thousand and then she was left with just just over a thousand pounds. I saw a doctor mm. on Twitter. Mm. Doctor mm-hmm. six years mm. education. Mm. Calculation and book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Masters writing PhD. PhD. Bachelor's honored. Honored. <laughs> <laughs> she sold her net pay mm. after tax. It's ridiculous. One thousand seven hundred pounds. It makes no pounds. sense. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? As a doctor. Does it make sense? Not like a doctor in training or a midwife. Not saying that even those jobs doctor, are not are not worth yeah. it. But it's that sense of the the, the level the and level. the position that you have. Doctor, like as in doctor. When your mommy yeah. says my daughter's a doctor, yeah. bragging yes. rights. It's like the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Awful. When I saw that, my heart. It's so sad. My heart. This economy is it's fucking terrible. scary. Doctors are making one thousand seven hundred a month. That is terrible. Girl, Saving I, lives, everything. I'm finna start. Listen, if I was a doctor, I said I'm finna start selling drugs. Mm. I'm finna start doing some judges. I would do it. Do everything. I will start selling. Um, what is it? What's that? What's that drug? I will start selling morphine. For the high streets, I said to God. Before you get locked up, don't be here. Listen, no, I'm finna do. I'm finna, I'm finna hustle, my guy. Go and make I'm, cupcakes. Go and do something. I'm finna hustle. Listen, I'm finna hustle. <laughs> Shit, if I was a doctor. No, I'm sorry because th- that that amount and the way the government is acting, I'm like, do you actually not genuinely think about what you're doing? Like, I even saw a video of um one presenter. She's on Good Morning Britain and she mm-hmm. spoke to Boris Johnson and he was she was questioning him because there was a lady who was an old p- lady. She was a pensioner mm-hmm. and she said how the lady has said she has a freedom pass, mm-hmm. but she has to leave her house a lot of the time because she wants to make sure she saves electric. I saw that. Yeah. 
and she has to go when the shop's about to close to get the food on the yellow sticker. Yeah, reduced and food. And the fool, the with his head looking the like idiots. a mango seed, just there saying, "Well, we we put things in place. You haven't done anything. Shut up." Do you know what he said? He said, "I'll have you know that I'm the reason why there's freedom pass there." <laughs> he said to go. Congrats. I stood there and I said, "Man of the year, Boris Boris." The guy Boris C. Boris. But you know this. You know what it is. I mm-hmm. I strongly believe, although a lot of people don't like him, I strongly believe this guy was, is going to stay in this position for a long time. Do you know what? I feel like I don't really know much about politics. Mm. Yeah, I kind of stay off it to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I do believe Boris is a yes man. You know, there's some people who mm. are in power yeah. in front. Mm. But they're puppets. I can yeah. see Boris being a puppet. Oh, I yeah. can see him being a yes man to the other to the oh, other yeah, men. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I feel like he's gonna stay in power mm. because other people have access to him. Yeah. For him to be given the nose and given the mm-hmm. yes. But I do want to share something with you mm. today. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm back from my holiday trip. Yeah. This is my one year anniversary. Congrats! For Congrats. Say, I want to say I I said I have to say it guys thank Mm. you so much like honestly we have hit one year we've been we've been in the game we young bloods one year in the motherfucking game (laughs) so I just want to say thank you thank you to all the bad boys and bad girls honestly from my heart I want to start crying because I'm a motherfucker I ain't finna cry I did cry on Instagram live though no no, that was good to lay out because you know you know how hard you've worked you know what I mean I'm so happy I don't even think it's me like every single person has contributed mm. to the building of this platform and I'm so happy. That it's so good. surreal. That is good. One good. year. It's a liberating feeling. The you, baby, yes. one year baby can walk in it. Yeah. Can walk in. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Pro, but yeah, honestly, I'm I'm so so how long mm. have you been in the game? Ten years. <laughs> Ten years in the game? Yeah, around like 20, 2012. Well you're on YouTube first. You was on YouTube, yeah, YouTube. first. Right? Yeah, wow. YouTube first and then TikTok twenty twenty. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah, so we're, so we're, in, we're in June now. So you work in. Yeah, yeah we're, we're in June. June now. So next month, 1st of July, marks one year, uh, 10 years. Wow. Yeah. How was your YouTube journey like? Oh, that was, that was, that was very, very tough. It was very tough because I was doing it in school mm-hmm. and I went to an all-boys school mm-hmm. and there was a lot of judgmental rubbish in that, like, when you're a guy and you're doing like YouTube and stuff, obviously back then <clears throat> it wasn't a trend. Mm-hmm. So to you, you look like an idiot. Mm-hmm. So doing it then, it was really tough because I wasn't getting anywhere. Like I, from, I think it was only until the end of 2019, I earned about a thousand subscribers from 2012 till 2019. Wow. Yeah. So I was like doing so much, so much. I did every, it got so bad to the point. I was so desperate. I remember 2015, I started doing DIY Starbucks drinks. DIY, oh God. Even though yeah. I couldn't give a damn about Starbucks at the time, but because I want to work with them, but I said, you know what? I said, you know what? Anything I can do to gain some sort of traction, traction or yeah. engagement didn't work, but it's fine because you know I can't say like I haven't tried. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was a lot. It was a lot, and I really yeah I tried so much. Um, and then I talk about I talk about two years off. Mm-hmm. Um, just before the pandemic because it was like at this point I'm, I'm doing so much and it's not working and it's got to the point where I was just constantly 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 doing videos that I'm not proud of and I'm not even happy with I'm just sitting there filming for uh, editing for hours took two years off so literally I was literally living life normally going to church going to work going to school whatever and then 2020 came around but this is before we were in any lockdown my sister was like you need to jump on TikTok it's really really cool Da-da-da-da-da. and when TikTok came around in the UK I was like I was so eager, but I said, he's actually, no, take a step back because you don't want to get into a depressing state before and mm-hmm. just go on the app and just realize that things are not working out again. Yeah. Went on there and then I just did one video. Didn't know how the algorithm worked. Didn't know how hashtags worked. So literally wake up next morning, boom. What video was this? Off. So I did a video and it was like, when you go downstairs in the kitchen and you um you see the dishes and you know that <laughs> song, that song, um, Dua Lipa, that um, Don't Start Now, the... Did a full 180. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So, but what they do on TikTok is they edit sounds. So, it was do the full 180 where they kept replaying it. Mm-hmm. So, when I turn around, I'll be 180 degree and I have a thought in my head, no, I shouldn't do it. Come back. Oh, or yeah. My mum will find out. Come back. And that went viral because it was very relatable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, from there, I remember. So, what I actually remember very vividly what happened was because I had drama school in the weekends. So, I went to um, in the morning. I don't check my phone genuinely. So, I went very early in the morning. My lesson was in King's Cross on a Sunday morning. And I, my phone was off the whole time. Yeah. Finished the lesson, put my phone back on, and then my sister's typing 
messaging me in capitals. I don't know why she's typing capitals like I can hear her. Or she's typing <laughs> OMG, you're viral, you're viral. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, just because I know she's she likes to be silly. No, no, no. Like, I'm not joking, you're viral, you're viral. I'm like, you need to shut up. Like, I don't believe what you're talking about. Because by this time, I didn't even know my notifications were off, but they were off on the app. Then she goes, oh, 50K, 300K, 400 I'm like, what are you talking about? So I open up the app and I see that my video's gone on about like six, 700K views. And no one around me is having TikTok in my class. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm smiling, but they don't know why I'm smiling. They think I'm smiling because of the conversation they're having. Little Joanna I couldn't give a damn what you're talking about. Yeah. I've gone viral here. So I'm going, I'm all the back, going back home. And my mum's like, hey, he's, you can't stop now. You've got these people in your hand. You have to keep going. I love Let's that. And from there, back to back, I remember I was posting about, no joke, I was posting anything between 15 to 20 times a day. Wow. Back to back. And then I grew from zero to 100K from February to April, zero to 100K. Wow. Then from April to September, um, 100K to 1 million. And then from September to December, 1 million to 8 million. And then from December to March of this year, I went from 8 million to 10 million and I'm on 12.6. Do you know how crazy? Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, as we speak, still the first and only black TikToker with the most following in the UK. And if that position's taken, that's cool. Um, but I've made that mark. Let them motherfucking now know. Now check that. Now check that. Do you know what? <laughs> I don't even think I need to motherfucking introduce you at this point. I mean... I'm finna fucking do it right now, guys. We have... We like to introduce people in the middle. Just okay. to flow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't even think you need much of an introduction, I guys. mean, let the people know, you know. Guys, we have a TikTok superstar yes. right now. Yeah. He is an actor, yeah. an entertainer. Yeah. He is the biggest... Yeah. Black... Yeah. UK... Yeah. TikToker yeah. right now. Check yeah. the motherfucking numbers. Yeah. The numbers don't Check lie. Check it out. <laughs> it is no, it feels good. It, it does. is. It does. It Me. does. Yeah, it does. Mr. Ahiz, yes. man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really do. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? You, I'm, I, I don't even, do you know, I don't even, just to see a black man winning yeah. in this space right mm -hmm. now is absolutely phenomenal i love Thank to see you. when i see when i see black people winning like yeah. regardless let's call a spade the same when i see black people winning i'm like yes that's my that's mm -hmm. a piece of me yeah that is a yeah. piece we're of all me. winning together we're all eating from the same table 100 yeah. percent. representation is so important mm -hmm. so when we have somebody who looks like us and yeah. who has come from our background mm -hmm. coming to these spaces yeah. i'm honestly so so proud yeah. you're living in la right now back and forth but i'm in there most of the time so i was actually meet, i was meant to be there now mm -hmm. but there was a lot of rubbish going on recently with like um got robbed recently and there's a lot of yes. rubbish happening so i'm not really settled mm -hmm. so i said you know what let me you need to be with your yeah, people let me do you have be... any family out there um no i have family in other states but mm -hmm. i haven't actually really met them so how yeah. are you finding living out there mm. by yourself without the the comfort and the security yeah. of your family i know you're quite yeah. close with your sister yeah your sister all the time on yeah, the yeah, yeah you know what it is mm -hmm. uh, with me like even though i have like a lot of family around mm -hmm. me i'm very comfortable with my own space a lot mm -hmm. of the time even when i go to like events or i have a like, campaign or i've got a shoot or something like i had a shoot recently and then my mm -hmm. sister actually wants to come i'm like yeah you can come but i'm like mm, I, want, I want to be on my own yeah but the thing is like my family they're very supportive mm -hmm. very very liberal they know I've been doing this for a long time mm -hmm. and they want to see me win and thrive. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that because many families don't have that support system around them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but um, I, a lot of the time, I'm just used to just being on my own. But when I went, the first time I went to LA was um, 2019. Mm -hmm. No, 2018. Um, and I was 19 when I went doing social media but it was nothing like this i i yeah. had under a thousand subscribers on youtube like no one knew who i was um literally my student loan to go working at primark at the time just to get a little bit of pennies just to go mm -hmm. it was tough literally like it was really tough when it came to money but i said you know what i'm gonna make this work because i've been watching youtube for so many years i'm seeing all my favorite youtubers living their life there and i even though i didn't have any friends like i literally went on my own yeah even though i had didn't have any friends i said let me at least be in that space and just manifest I love and that. i remember this is so crazy. When I think about it, I literally get goosebumps. 2019, I came back. And the thing is with LA, everybody, you could be a Uber driver, you could be a, a, a dustbin sweeper, whatever it is. Every single person has a dream and they want to be somebody big in LA. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was meeting two of my friends, at, well, one of my friends, 
at the time, but they brought a friend with them. Yeah. And I was gonna meet them in Hollywood Boulevard. It's like where the Walk of Fame is. It's like mm-hmm. the whole like attraction area. Yeah. And um, the Uber driver noticed my accent. He was like, "Oh, like what do you do? Where are you from?" I said, "Oh, yeah, I'm just from London. Just doing some networking. Didn't know anybody, but I just manifested that." And he was like, "Oh, okay, cool." So he's just speaking to him about like my goals and what I want to do. So he stopped me right in front of you know the Jimmy Kimmel show yeah yeah right outside their studio and he was like oh by the because that's why I was going to meet my friends anyway and he said oh by the way there's a camera crew there and they're asking questions for it with the public you can get a chance chance to be featured on their show so they were doing a prank saying oh there's a bug on you I knew there was no bug but obviously acting that he's had to come into play yeah I got there and I united my thing and you know on Jimmy Kimmel show first TV appearance in the US international Um, and yeah and then I remember as I was waiting for my friends, I saw the stars on the floor and I literally walked on. So at the time I was 19, but I was turning 20 the next year. So I literally stepped on every single, I stepped on 20 stars and I basically said where I want to see myself in the future. I don't know where, but I want to be somebody. Then 2020 came around, pandemic, obviously TikTok started to like boost. And then 2021, last year, I went back after the pandemic since my manifestation and then boom. Everything is, is just, amazing. everything's growing. And honestly, God is literally at, at the foot of it. He has literally, be, he's the reason why I'm here. There's no, there's no, there's no man or anybody on this earth. God is the reason why I am here and I, I, I'm forever grateful. Amen to yeah. that. Amen to that. And speaking of TV appearances, yeah. Yeah. let's talk about this, this, <laughs> here this we very go. interesting here we appearance go. that you had. <laughs> That, to be honest, I still see on TikTok every now and again. Is it Judge Renda? Please, or Renda? please, 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 please. <laughs> right? Do you know, first of all, was that real or was that a stage? No, it, it, it wasn't real. It wasn't, it wasn't, real. wasn't real. It wasn't real. But obviously, acting and he's came into play and obviously people thought it was, but, you know, it shows that acting's, you know, doing something. Watching yourself um, doing that back, how yeah. do you feel about watching that? Cringe, because I don't know who asked me to put that hair on my head. <laughs> I don't know who asked me to do that. But at the time, my friend at the time, he was like, because I went on there twice. Mm-hmm. But the first time, my friend at the time was like, oh, do you want to go on? Because we both really wanted to like go on TV and just like, you know, become somebody. Somebody, yeah. yeah. And we we're like, okay, let's do it. Mind you, we didn't rehearse anything. We just went straight in. And I was nervous because the producers were like, okay, so um, you have to sign here, here and here. Um, um, obviously, just to make sure that obviously that like, we know that obviously, you know, you know, you're coming in here and obviously like you want to get this case and all that. Yeah. And that. Then the studio is very tiny. We did like a run through about going through and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, Judge Rudy himself, he's like really small. He's like five foot two or something like. No way. Obviously that where he's sitting gives the it's, optical illusion that he's obviously he's up a, there. He's, he's that guy. Yeah, 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 but no, he's really small. Um, and we got there, done the thing. Um, and yeah, it, it was crazy. And obviously, like, who I didn't even know that was even going to come back. And then what they do, apparently, they email you every now and then telling you when they're going to air it again. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm, never, I'm never running away from that. <laughs> I'm never running away from that. But yeah, that was, I think the last time I did it was 2019. 2019. Again, just before the pandemic, 2019. Um, yeah. And then obviously it just creeps back up on social media and then here we go. It was like, is that he? Is that he? Yeah, there it is. No, TikTok, is, TikTok has pitched your mom. I saw it on my For You page. Yeah. I said, oh my, the, the high top, everything. But it's growth, man. It's part of your story. No, it it's is. A it's part, part of my of story. Journey. Do you know what I mean? It's part of it. And even looking back, like I'm not even ever want to be yet, but seeing the growth, it just shows you that like, you know, the sky's the limit and mm-hmm. you you start off small and you build your, your way up. Mm-hmm. Think about all your favorite musicians that you listen to when you look at their old music videos nothing compared to now mm-hmm. like even when you look at old music videos like you see the black borders on the side obviously as your time goes on everything cameras change yeah uh bodies everything changes do you know mm-hmm. what i mean and that's just how life is do you know what i mean and i just yeah i'm just grateful and i'm not where i want to be yet but i'm still growing 100 percent. you know and yeah I'm just, I'm just grateful. You know yeah. what? I love that. And honestly, yeah. I haven't even asked to see how you are. Mm. How is your mental? How is your mental? Because honestly, mm. th- yeah, there's, it's, it's been a lot. I want to talk about first of all yeah. that obviously recently you had a really, really scary situation yeah. with someone stealing from you. Can you just yeah. elaborate on that? Yeah. So I went to an event. I think maybe almost two weeks ago now mm-hmm. in Central London, and the event was only two hours. I was like, okay, cool. it's, not, it's not a big deal. Usually when I go to like events so I'm in Central, I usually have security with me because I've had situations before where um, people have been really mad and mm-hmm. I just don't, I, I can't. You can't die, yeah. yeah. And it, I'm not going to lie, I, I've never had social anxiety mm-hmm. and I don't prophesy that I have, mm-hmm. but I'm very vigilant. Like when I'm on the street, I don't have earphones in. I don't, I'm very, very careful because yeah. even when people brush past me and stuff, and obviously as you do in, in London, 
I'm very, very careful, very vigilant in seeing who's around me because people are very mad. And what happened was I, after the event, I didn't even stay too long. Usually when I go to events, I'm not there too long. I'm literally there for like half an hour. Mm -hmm. Went there, went to Nando's down the top of Road because obviously uh, Bond Street, Oxford Street, Top Road is literally one whole strip. Yeah. Went down, went to go get Nando's, met a lovely girl who's working there actually. Then when I finished, I, because I have two phones, a business and personal, I tend to call both Ubers on both phones, see what one comes first. Mm -hmm. And then whatever one is slower, I cancel that one. Then I hear like a motorbike coming towards me, but I don't notice it. Yeah. I like, because it's central London, they're everywhere. Noise is everywhere, yeah. And so I'm waiting there. And then I notice something's a bit weird because he's riding on the pavement and you're meant to ride on the main road mm -hmm. and he's with three other guys. And when I look towards him, my Uber app's open now on both phones and I'm one's in front of the other. So I'm holding both of them. I'm, yeah. I'm on the edge of the road and I look up and he's got a light that's blinding. You can't even see, but he's wearing all black glasses, mask, everything straight out of my hand. And at that moment, I couldn't, you couldn't even run if you tried. If you run, you look dumb because <laughs> it's like, was, is, it's, gone. Brrr, it's gone. And there was two security guards on the opposite side of the road. They saw everything. I said, can I please use your phone to call the police? I've just been robbed. They're like, there's something they can do. Cool. There was another guy, white man to be exact. He was there. I said, can you please help me, please? Not my problem. Wow. Nice. Went inside the building that he was at. Um, and you could tell it was, it was very, very rich, very mm -hmm. Caucasian, very rich, you know, conservative type people, you know, you just know they, they, yeah. Went in there, I told the waiter, they were like, okay, cool, let's let's get you water. I said, I don't want water, just please, just call the police, please, please, please. Yeah. Um. Then as I'm on the phone, I'm waiting on the phone and then they give me the crime reference number and I'm asking for a pen, trying to write down the reference number. One idiot who's working there is telling me, oh, you forgot the lid. Do I want a lid right now? I don't need the lid of the pen. My phone's been stolen. What are you talking about a bloody flipping lid? I'm done. So the police came, they questioned me um, and they were asking all these questions. Um, and then they were like, oh, you need to, how are you gonna get home? I said, well, I'm not taking transport because obviously I don't have my wallet with me, even though I did, but I'm not taking transport. Mm -hmm. They were like, okay, we can get you a black cab. Obviously when you get home, obviously pay the guy. So I had no phone for like a good week. And it was very hard because usually I would like turn to my side, pick up my phone, now I'm picking up my iPad. Very long. Mm -hmm. So what happened was um, I just emailed my manager, told him that I don't have my phone at the moment. So obviously if you want to contact me, obviously it has to be through email for now. Um, my PT as well, I had to tell him because I, I had a PT session the next day and I said, I can't go anywhere right now. So yeah, um, police honestly were really useless. Didn't do much, honestly a waste of time. They gave me, they gave me an email to ask for updates. Wasn't getting any answer. Then I realized the email they sent me wasn't even the person on the case, it was somebody else. So wow. they, weren't even, they weren't even looking at it. So the phones are somewhere in someone else's hands, but I I've, I've just got two new phones. Obviously, I didn't want to make the purchase, but I said, you know what, I need, this is my job. But this I is your it. job, yeah. So <clears throat> I made sure I got them both insured. Um, yeah, but whoever stole that phone, um, you know it will never be well with you. My mom's a praying mother, so just know that whatever happens to you, don't be surprised when anything happens. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And obviously the week, several weeks before that, there was a lot of cancelling going on with me and my channel. Yeah, let's... So it was, yeah, it, yeah, it was you've long. Had a, you've had a very, very interesting month. Yeah. And I feel like, obviously, we've been able to see the the, the growth of you mm -hmm. and we've been rooting for you and mm -hmm. and just to see you as a black man yeah. go from success to success. Yeah. But we've had we've had a stumbling block. Yeah. We've had some stumbling block this month, and I and I definitely would love to hear yeah. um, your take on everything mm -hmm. that's been happening. And yeah. the first things first, mm. the situation on TikTok mm. where you made a TikTok mm. um, miming to a song, yeah. and um, uh, the the Asian community, mm. the Muslim community was very offended by it, mm -hmm. and um, they weren't kind of happy with you how you addressed it. Yeah. And what can you say about that? Okay, so. What happened was someone said when I come, when I do my duets and reactions on TikTok, people send them. They at me in the comments and they send they send in to me saying we want you to react to this. Cool. Mm -hmm. So there was this video that I saw and it was two girls and they were singing a song. I didn't know the song was religious. I didn't know that it was obviously it was cultural because obviously it's not a song you will hear like on the Billboard charts. It's just a song that just happens to be from, you know, a uh, Asian country. Yeah. So I duetted the video and I was miming to it and I was doing my facial expressions and all that I usually do. Um, closed the app, opened it back up again after like 30 minutes, had about maybe like 800k views. I'm like, okay, it's doing really, really well. Um, comments were fine, cool, close the app. When usually when I post, I don't um, stay on the app. I genuinely, Instagram, everything, I just close it and all my notifications are off on yeah. all apps. 
open the app after like an hour or two and then it had about like three million views and i'm now seeing you know this don't say right with me not you mocking our culture da, 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 da. and my first um approach of it i was very defensive i'm like no I'm not interested because you guys have been trying to counsel me from time from the very beginning before I started doing any sort of duets or anything you people have been trying to counsel me for time and then um I said no the video's still staying up then what happened was I closed the app woke up the next day and I'm seeing emails dms death threats we want to come and chef you up I know where you live all that kind of stuff more time you're 12 and if you were to see me in person you wouldn't do anything but at the same time with that being said it was very 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 like weird waking up to all of that mm -hmm. and it's like how do i handle that so i get a call from my manager and he's like what the f are you doing how can you do this da, 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 da. and i'm like okay first of all chill relax what is it he said you have to understand that what you've done was really, really wrong. You need to make a whole apology video saying you're going to hold yourself accountable. Da, 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 da. And I was like, I'm not doing that because if I do an apology video, it's never going to be enough for somebody. I had somebody doing a video on me. They were like, oh, to make up for it, you need to give every single South Asian person who has offended money. What's money going to do? Money's not going to solve the issue. Money's not going to solve. It's not going to change the fact that people's view on me. Mm -hmm. If I've been giving you money, are you, are you still going to, are you still going to hate me? Like, you know, but, I had a lot of thought about it and what happened was I went to LA during this time but I booked LA way before but I needed to be out of the country anyway because I just needed just to be in my own space and I was thinking about the situation and I was like okay do you know what it is here's the thing you're not South Asian so you can't speak what you don't know which is true mm -hmm. there's many people who were offended and I have apologized on that the reason why I was defensive was because I had been doing this from the beginning of time so the fact that it's this specific video that people chose and you didn't choose any of the other ones, I was like, it was it was a whole idea of how I thought about it was people like to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. But I was apologetic and I said what I needed to say. And, you know, I said I'd be more mindful in the future. Now, here's the thing. Me doing that video, obviously it's arguable to say if it was correct or not. I had many people telling me, South Asians as well DMing me and telling me how they're even Asian themselves and they didn't find the video offensive. One of my really good friends from uni, um, from college, he's South Asian, he's Pakistani, he's Muslim. He said he sent it to his family group chat and his cousins. They all found it hilarious. So it was a matter of, which doesn't necessarily mean that people who were offended, their, their feelings are invalid. Doesn't mean that at all. But it's the idea where obviously people have different views on it or not. I've had people saying, um, what do you call it? That, I went on Twitter once and I saw him. I just typed in my name. I'm not big on Twitter, but I said, let me just have a look. Yeah. And the hatred that people have towards me is actually unreal. Like, I was like, do you actually put TikTok aside? The fact that you actually have so much hatred against somebody that you don't even know. Like, do you actually not realize why you're so stagnant and you're not actually moving in life? Like, when you actually deep it, you actually have to display your hate about. And when you look at the stuff that people were saying and speaking about, it was really irrelevant. Like, it wasn't even about my video anymore. People were been basically just saying, oh, it's about time that people say cancel his boy. He's an eyesore. Da, 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 da. I don't like him. I don't know why people find him funny. There's a reason why I've got 12.6 million followers. So people obviously are interested. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like a lot of hatred that people get, not just me, but I think a lot of hatred that people get, the root of it is just envy and jealousy. It is. Yeah, a lot of it is. And yeah. I feel the reason why that is is because when people see you on a higher pedestal, they know they can't get there or they 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 don't have the mental capacity to get up there so the only way they can they can suppress their emotions is by sp spreading hate now obviously god doesn't work that way but if you feel that's the way you're going to get your bag good luck to you but i feel like getting where you need to be in life is not by being envious and jealous of people you actually need to work hard for it and not mm -hmm. to expect something just to come in the click of a finger mm -hmm. um i took a week off tiktok yeah um and i just used that opportunity just to move forward and I came back after a week, posted for a day. Next day I woke up, I get a call from my sister about 4 a.m. And she's like, 4 a.m. LA time. She's like, what happened to your TikTok? I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, your TikTok's not there. I'm like, no, <laughs> this can't be, this can't be possible. Went on TikTok, I see I'm logged out. Never logged out on my TikTok. So I tried to log back in, it's not working. Contact my manager. He was like, he's on it now. He's got contacts at TikTok. Basically, TikTok now have moved my account to the US. So basically, I've got more US contacts now than I do with the UK because the UK, they don't, they're not really doing much anymore. And if I'm going to be based in the US, then I might as well make the most of it with the contacts I have there. 
Right. So my sister wrote an email to legal team. She contacted um, some people she knows at TikTok. I did the same thing. My manager did the same thing. After like two days, it was back. Um, but I was looking at the situation and there's two things that I've realized from it. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm not inv invalidating anyone's feelings if they felt offended because I'm a human being and you know, there will be things that I have, I would do that I may not see as offensive, but other people yeah. might, do you know what I mean? And you learn from it, do you know Absolutely. what I mean? At the end of the day, I feel like for me, it definitely was um, a learning curve. I feel like even though I may, not, I may have not seen the offense, hence why I've done the video, God could be protecting me for something in the future that could even be worse to the point where I couldn't even get anywhere in Do my you life. now acknowledge the offense that you could have created in that yeah. community. I definitely do acknowledge it. I, mm -hmm. I, I really, really do. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, I do comedy on TikTok mm -hmm. and comedians on TikTok tend to always rub off the wrong shoulders in some sort of way. Whether that is someone, whether that is with body shaming or culture or ethnic background, not saying that these are okay, yeah. but you have to be extra, 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 extra careful because TikTok is one of them platforms that they're not even speaking about my situation, but somebody will take something so small and they will try and put it to the same level as an R. Kelly situation. That's exactly what TikTok's like. Because I posted that video on my Instagram, on my Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I didn't get one negative comment. And I posted it on my TikTok and obviously I got a lot of slack for it. Yeah. Um, all I know is that in the future, if somebody wants to tell me to do a video like that again, it's a big up no. Yeah. Because there is no way I'm risking working with brands and trying to get where I need to get to because of a TikTok, a 12 second video. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think for me, um, obviously I was a spectator in this situation. Mm. And of course, when I first watched it, I, I didn't know what this, I didn't know the, the importance of the song mm. and what it stood from. Mm. And again, I feel like, just as you said, it's mm. so important that every single person in mm. this life has different experiences. Exactly. And I feel like their experiences brought them to that result where they felt offended. Mm. And you can't, like I always say, you can't take, you can't be upset mm. to how somebody views something. Yeah, you just have to be as a human being. Just because you find something cool, mm. other people might not find it cool. Yeah, and that's you know? fine. And, and, and that's not fine. A bad yeah, thing. absolutely, mm. it's not a bad thing. But I feel like um, going back to, I think the issue that that people had mm. was the the initial defensiveness mm. that you had. Yeah, was it? Why why do you feel like that was your first? reaction mm. to the situation yeah the reason why was because i went when when people were telling me oh it's the way you handled it mm -hmm. i was like i'm not having this because you people have been looking for an opportunity from the very beginning of time even before i started doing reactions and i started doing tiktoks like that people always had an opportunity i looked for every excuse me opportunity to try and look for a way to cancel me mm -hmm. so my initial thought wasn't going to be like oh yeah i'm going to apologize right now yeah because i felt like it was wrong no i was like i'm not letting you win but it got to the point where I realized, okay, he's, do you know what? At the end of the day, you will not die. <laughs> you will not die. Branders will still be there. You will still be able to be the person you're going to be. People know you for being funny and you've helped a lot of people. I really have. Yeah. And I feel like I can't no longer let this video and this situation um, be like the blueprint or let it be a thing that people are gonna know me for because I don't want that. Because some people will see my see me for the first time and they might see a video that someone's speaking about that and that's their first perception of me. Even though I feel like it's really important that people just not just obviously jump to conclusions, but that's just how social media is. Absolutely. Yeah, but you have to be extra careful because one thing my manager said to me, he's white as well, mm -hmm. and he said to me, he's what you need to realize is that you're black mm -hmm. and you're a public figure. Two things, double homicide right there. You need to be very careful because obviously you being black, automatically you're seen as a bad guy yeah automatically so you need to make sure that anything that you do which is unfortunate but you have to make sure everything you do doesn't give people the opportunity to counsel you for that Absolutely. you know what i mean now for, i'll give you an example after this whole situation i'm seeing there's a girl called cnma on tiktok i don't know her but apparently she was accused for sexual assault to her boyfriend and this and the third she came back to tiktok didn't do an apology apparently released a swimwear line moving as normal her tiktok wasn't taken down another guy called tony lopez apparently he also was a sex offender where i'm saying i think it's like 23 24 he didn't do any apology video he literally posted videos this has nothing happened right you have someone like james charles same thing you have all these tiktokers and yes i will say white tiktokers who mm -hmm. are doing all these things right and you don't want to counsel them for it but when you see somebody who is from an ethnic background doing something which is not to the degree of sexual assault or something that people see that will take you to court you now want to try and make noise now yeah. by me saying that 
that's not me saying that people who are offended your opinions your feelings are not are not valid i'm not yeah. saying that but we need to put two and two together there's also another tiktoker as well i don't know his name he's either middle eastern or something and i have no issue with his videos at all i feel like his videos are funny to a degree and people find them funny and you know it's what it is he has been miming and doing facial expressions to afrobeat songs from day dot now he did the same thing to the same song i did and people are saying oh so you guys want to cancel his we don't want to cancel this guy all this type of stuff someone in the comments were like the reason why that they're not canceling him and they're canceling me is because my video is more stronger whatever that means i don't know what that means but you know it's just it's just so crazy yeah. the world that we live in how people like to be confused and for me tiktok is not my career tiktok is a platform that just so happens to be the place that i happen to grow on yeah and it's been a it's been an amazing opportunity which i'm exceptionally great grateful for for me to be in the rooms with certain people who could basically help make my career fr flourish tiktok is a platform which has been great mm -hmm. but it's not my it's not my bread and butter yeah and acting is my career that's my life and i'm using tiktok as a building block to get me to there so that's why i also felt like in a way i'm low-key grateful for this that happened so i can have a step back and realize okay he's you need to now change your direction in terms of your career because although yes you said you wanted to do acting don't get too comfortable on this app yeah you know what i mean so you know those who are watching those who are still thinking about the situation i have apologized if you accept it or not personally i can't do anything from that all mm -hmm. i can do is move forward we're Absolutely. all human beings mm -hmm. i feel like also what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that because you're on tiktok because you're on because you're not a public figure on tiktok doesn't mean that you can be naming and shaming people knowing that you could also do the same thing behind closed doors yeah and i feel like a lot of people do that i even had one guy he made a video in my defense and then shabara evil people posted my stuff onto instagram and he was coming for me but i'm like a week ago you were defending me so where wh where did this change come from the energy but i'll follow them anyway because they're just they're just bad mind mm -hmm. it's just crazy i feel like with the shea bar it's one of them places where like if you're too invested in it and things are about you on there you genuinely can lose yourself yeah. I, I i'm not the type to do myself over stuff like that like mm -hmm. obviously you're talking about me because i'm a hot topic yeah but i mean in the sense of it's weird that because obviously tit shea bar obviously i run by black people and it's so unfortunate how they're so quick to jump on the floors but when someone is actually doing great you mm -hmm. don't want to actually address that like Agreed. one of my friends uh drea mac she's a rapper and she's in la right now she's even got a show today and basically she was talking about how somebody was trying to say oh um that people who are studs are studs by choice and she made a video in, re in response to that but it was a controversial topic mm -hmm. But she was saying she doesn't like the fact that people can be posting stuff like that, which will cause an argument. But when someone wants to now release her EP or something, you guys are, you can't see it, you're blind to it. Yeah, Do you agreed, know what I mean? agreed. So, unless you pay for it, <laughs> money's money. <laughs> but it's just so crazy how this world is. So, I'm just, yeah, I'm just extra, extra careful right now. And I feel like God definitely made, allowed it to happen. Yeah. So, in the future, I don't go ahead and do something that could potentially be worse, that could literally tarnish my career. So, yeah. right now, I'm safe. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm just, right now, I am still on TikTok, but I'm now working more towards my acting. I'm writing, I'm doing a lot of stuff behind the Amazing. scenes. So I'm being more productive in that sense. Because if I was doing like economics or medicine in uni, for example, by now I'd be looking for employment for the new academic year. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even though drama is more practical, it's still good to not just sit there, do actually something with it. And I'm 23 and I'm, I'm, I'm ready to work and I have been ready to work for the longest time. So Amazing. it's like, let's actually make something of that. And let's just move on from that. I love that. And I have yeah. one more question for mm -hmm. you. Do you feel like you are misunderstood? I was reading mm. a lot of uh, tweets yeah. um, in reference to the situation. And like you said, there was a mm. conversation that came out of mm. this uh, situation. Yeah. And people were saying that, um, you know, essentially uh, he's mentioned in his youtube video that mm. he did get bullied a lot mm. he was going through and it seems that his content now he's kind of transformed into the bully mm. uh, into the bully yeah. with his content you know you do a lot of reaction videos mm. and some people find your reaction videos offensive to mm. other creators mm. do you feel like your content and who you are is misunderstood mm. yeah definitely feel he's misunderstood a lot i feel like with me being somebody who was i don't want to use the word victim mm. but i say i was bullied at school and for me my coping mechanism was of that was a lot of it was dark humor and things that people weren't necessarily find funny and that has been my coping mechanism for many many years and i feel like when it comes to my videos and stuff you know 
like without trying to toot my own horn but you know toot toot my videos are funny to an extent because that's why i have the following that i have right now and that's why i have engagement that i have right now but with that being said it's understandable why some people might find it funny but TikTok is an app which is very overly, overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And I have seen that in many things. Some girl got cancelled a couple weeks ago because basically she made a salad, which was, a prank. I think it was Malaysian or it was Filipino. But she didn't mention that it was. She just called it a cucumber salad and she got cancelled for that. She got cancelled oh, yeah. for, yes, saw... for cucumbers. We are, you're cancelling people cooking cucumbers. And it just goes to show you how overly sensitive the platform is now that's not saying that people's feelings are not valid mm -hmm. think what you want but it's getting to the point now you can't even breathe before somebody says you're making fun of someone who's got asthma you can't even i um, you know the song loading by um olamide yeah yeah the the lyrics go i can't feel my face no more i can't feel i sang that somebody told me last year that i'm making fun of people who, who have no legs why don't you cancel the, the the guy who made the song himself? Is a song? Are you gonna be telling? It, are you gonna pull the cord at the club when that mm -hmm. when when the DJ's mixing the tracks? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's getting to the point you can't do anything anymore. Yeah. And the thing is, like I I when people do say the whole thing about the whole bullying thing, I won't lie. I will say that to me, I feel like that's a stretch because I personally have been through a lot at yeah. school. I've been through a lot for me to get where I'm right now. And I'm very numb to, like, even when people were saying in hate, to me, I, I, I'm very numb to it. Yeah. My my concern, mainly, out of this, is how brands would perceive me. That because of me, that's how I make my money. But, and obviously, for people who've never seen my stuff before, and I don't want them seeing that version of me and thinking, oh, is that what he's like? Do you know what I mean? Because it's, you have to, when you're a public figure, yes, okay, cool, money, fame, or recognition is all nice, but at the same time, you really don't have a voice. You have, you you actually do not have a voice. You can't have an opinion. Because you could say the most subtle thing. Somebody will run with it and take you that and then make you look like you're a bad person. Yeah. And I feel like if somebody actually watched my bullying video very thoroughly through and through and actually saw, I think it was maybe like an hour, I think the video was, you can't really compare to my content that I make on social media. I feel like some people, like I remember also, there was a video of a girl, this I did last year, there was a girl, she basically has no teeth, but she basically has got um, these dentures that she puts yeah. in. And no one saw it coming, her taking them out. So when I saw it, I was gonna be like, oh. I said, eh? I was like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So people then said, you need to be very careful. How can you be doing that? Da -da 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 -da. I was like, okay. I see where people are coming from and I understand. But what I did is I actually messaged the girl directly and I DM'd her and I actually explained that this is the video that I've done. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I want to make sure, I just want to let you know that this is not in any way, shape or form to bring you down. I was just very taken back. She said, yeah, no, no, honestly, she found the video funny herself. She said that her reason for doing that video was to catch people off guard. Yeah. So I posted that, convers I screenshot it and I posted that to show people, look, I've got her consent. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And somebody actually DM'd me and said, they're really, really sorry for sending hate to me now that they saw that video and they realize it's not good to jump to conclusions. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And one thing also I can also say as well, nobody, and I can confidently say this in my whole chest, nobody can actually actively say that I have said something racist, homophobic, Islamophobic, all the type of phobics. They can't say I've said anything. A lot of people are judging by my facial expressions, which is my brand. And that's what I do. And that's why I got where I am right now. And I feel like what people need to understand is that this is who I am and mm -hmm. this is what I do. Yeah. And it's a thing where it's like, if you do get offended, that's okay. You have every reason to feel the way you want to feel. But that shouldn't be the reason why you should not bring somebody down just because you don't like them. All I know is now moving forward yeah. is that I'm being extra vigilant and extra careful. I still get the old one or two DMs asking me to react to something that's got to do with the same culture. So I don't even answer. I'm seeing people now making remixes to the song. Someone was like, oh, um, how can you be hating a he's when you're doing a remix? They're like, oh, because he's making facial expressions. Okay, but if something's that sacred, and that in, in my own knowledge, if something is that sacred, why would you even try to do anything with it that is original? I'm seeing people doing raps to the song, but nothing to do with God. Okay, but if that's the case, isn't that still going under the same bracket of disrespect to someone's culture and someone's religion? But no one's ready for that conversation. But you know what? I'm not saying the word, because you know what? Whatever happened to me happened. I've learned from it. I grow and I move on. People on the app love. To they say they love to pick and choose. It's like selective outrage. I've served the justice that was served. 
and now we move on to the next one. If people are still talking, if people are still talking about it, that's on you. I'm sorry. Like apology you asked for, you were given, and we've moved on. Um, that's just life. That's just life. It's, it's a lesson that I've learned. Hundred percent. But we move. So with everything that's happened, mm. you've had a crazy, crazy couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. What is the next step for you? What is the next journey for you? I feel like for me right now, the break that I took was really needed because I feel like when you're working constantly, 24 eight, you sometimes forget to take a break and sometimes you forget to come to reality. Yeah. And I feel like with social media, it can be really toxic and it can be really very contaminated with just so much. And I feel like that break I needed, even including when my TikTok was not working, like when it was di- when it was banned, it took time for me to really re- like unwind and come back to reality because I remember there'll be many times I'd be in LA in my Airbnb and I wouldn't eat. I would literally just be looking at the ceiling for hours and I'm like, okay, what can I now do moving forward? Because now my manager's not happy with me. Obviously we're on good terms now. My manager wasn't happy with me. Anytime he called me, I knew it would probably be something that would probably be to tell me off, but we've now gone past beyond that now. And we're now moving forward. For me, I'm now working predominantly on my acting Amazing. and getting onto the screen that's that's my that's is there my anything th- in the pipeline any netflix things i'm gonna tell well you i can't speak too much but just know that um i'm working and i'm writing Amazing. um so um yeah also because of evil eye people are very mad out here <laughs> uh but i definitely would say that i am working tirelessly tirelessly very very hard back-to-back meetings yeah so i feel like right now this is going to be another version that people have never really seen of me and i feel like it's it's gonna it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be different because you know everyone's so used to seeing the whole you know duets and TikToks. But for me, that's, there's no longevity in that. It was fun for five minutes, but like I'm looking to actually make a career and a, and a household name for myself. And I've been ready for a long time. It just takes time. It just takes time. But I'm ready. And you know, and I'm excited. Yes, I I'm am. always excited yeah. to see people new. Yes, and evolve themselves. Yeah. So big up you, man. Thank you. Big it's about you. time. It's about even when I went to the bathrooms, like it was very liberating because it's like it's gonna be it's gonna get to a point where I'm literally gonna be invited every single year. And, you know, I'm going to be on the red carpet. Hey, he's a, he's a, he's a, picture, picture, picture. They fucking invite me. They need to invite my ass back. Listen, home, listen. When I told, let, let, me, let, me, let me even give you a little insight because this is one thing I actually wanted to, re- like, I, I even said on my snap today, which is really important, not to rush the process because BAFTA, there's two BAFTAs apparently. There's mm-hmm. a, there's a the film one, film one and there's a TV, TV one. Yeah. So I think they're maybe like a month apart or two months apart. Mm-hmm. And last year, Instagram invited me to a Black History Month dinner and I was speaking, and we were there, and we were speaking and everything, and they were like, oh, we handpicked a few of you because we want to work, we really want to work with you. We really feel like you're like the next generation talent, da 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 Yeah. Cool. I'm really thinking like, these are my guys, they're really going to help me. Fast forward now, February comes, BAFTAs, I'm seeing all these creators there who were at the dinner, and I'm like, well, why am I not there? So I'm really, really getting really pissed off, and I'm like, so all these things you were saying, was it just for vibes and words? Like, hello, what's going mm-hmm. on? Um, sorry, not trying to toot my own horn, but toot toot again. You're literally looking at the biggest black creator in the whole of the UK when I've been working so tirelessly, so hard to get into these rooms and I'm at this level, like what else do you want? Like mm-hmm. it's all gone quiet. Like I'm really, really annoyed. And I was really, really getting pissed off. I'm like, what is going on? So I said to my manager, he was like, hey, do you know what? I really, really tried. I just don't know what it is. But sometimes some of these brands, they just go left and stuff. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. Literally before the second Baptist came, got a call three days before. We really want you to host it. Um, host a red carpet with Virgin Media. We really, really love you and your talent. When I got there, I found out I was not th- not just the only TikToker, but the only social media creator at the event. So God actually destined for me to be at that second one. Not the first one, the second one. And even when I got to the after party and I was speaking to the people at BAFTA, they're like, literally, they even prefer this BAFTA than even the other one because it's more close to home, it's more British, it's more homegrown. Mm-hmm. And being in that environment, it literally was like a main character moment. I was literally sitting with people on tables who are in all these big companies, either Channel 4, BBC, Netflix. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm literally here. Mm -hmm. And it's like, stop crying at his. Like when God says he's got something for you, he has got something for you. Just wait, because one thing is when you rush a process, you're actually damaging yourself. Absolutely. And one thing I've realized as well, sometimes when there's like events and there's premieres and all these things and campaigns are happening, I'm I'm not getting it. Is one thing I've learned is that you should, I, I should stop always wanting to be at every single thing and every, I wanted every single thing because yes. not every single thing that is happening or comes your way is for it's you. It's for you, yeah. God always Agreed. brings something, He because he wants the best for his children. He wants yeah. the best. And I feel like when he brings something to you, it I'll tell you right now, there's not one time I can ever say it hasn't. It's always made sense. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, 
I think it was two weeks ago. I just wrapped up on a shoot. Honestly, I can't wait for you guys to see it. But give us it, the tea. Give like, us small. Yeah, I, can't, I can't, can't say anything now. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Just give us I can't even say anything cute. now. Okay. Can't say anything when is now. it coming out? Um, I'm not sure, but the director did tell me that they want to try and bring out ASAP. Okay. But yeah, it, it was going to shock a lot of people. We're going to yeah. shake tables. Yes, yeah, shake the tables. The enemies is going to fall. Shake and quick. I'm excited. No, I'm, honestly, I'm so excited. Literally, I was told about it and then literally went on set, did the thing. Ah, oh, literally was so like, I'm like, no, nah, honestly, this is this is like a big comeback. Too good. After all the Higgy Hagalas been going on, this right now is like a big comeback and yeah. God made it happen because mm-hmm. like I said, any single time I want something and it doesn't come, God always, without thought, brings something else bigger. I love that. And that's why I always give thanks to him because I will not be here right now if it wasn't for him. Like I've, he's really helped me like financially. I've been able to help my family. I've been able to, you know, help people in need. Like usually like when I get paid, I give money to like charities. I give money to people back home. I give money to like homeless kids in Malawi. Like I'm always helping because if God can help you, he can help, some- why can't you help somebody else? It's selfish. Agreed. Do you know Agreed. what I mean? So yeah, honestly, I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> CNT baby. Of course, we are gonna start mm-hmm. with our, our win or bin. So, of okay. course, I'm gonna give you some topics of conversation. And you're gonna tell me whether it's a win or bin okay. and why. Simple as. Okay. All right, ready. let's go. So, win or bin? Mm. Holiday romance. So you meet okay. someone on holiday. Yeah. And they're your bay. Okay. And you bring them back to London. Win okay. or bin? Um been because and i'll tell you why just like because, that yeah been because you have to be you have to be realistic now some people mm-hmm. i remember i went to greece last mm-hmm. year and um went to this cafe and apparently the lady she's british mm-hmm. and her husband's british as well mm-hmm. but they both met on holiday in greece mm-hmm. when they were young and now she lives there with him and lives forever after that's not everyone's decent channel moment right now the thing is when it comes to long distance you have to be realistic. Mm-hmm. That's not always going to work. You can True. be doing all oh, dreamy leany. That's nice. But for five minutes, it's cool. But if you're trying to look for longevity within the relationship, don't bother. If you have to take a whole <laughs> flight <laughs> to go somewhere, FaceTimes are not the same as actually having you in the bed. But what if they what if they lived in London? What if okay, you just that's met the, them on holiday? Oh, that's different. That's different. Because obviously you're you're in the region. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like we can meet, we can talk, you know what I mean? Because obviously you can find anywhere someone anywhere. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But like it, it, I feel like it's a win in that sense if you're coming back to the same hometown. Mm-hmm. But if you're if I'm in if I'm in London and you're all the way in Japan or Malaysia, let's not yeah, even think about it. Rest, yeah. rest, rest. Listen, me. I love mm. a good holiday. I love meeting someone on holiday and just. But you know what? It's euphoric the because sun you know. It's euphoric because it's, it's 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 a it's a movie moment. It's like a cinematic okay, experience. It was nice for like you know, but you know they're gone with the wind now and you know. Have you ever met someone on holiday and just fancy them and just like? Mm. I won't lie. There was this one girl that I met when mm-hmm. I was in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, this was back in December, and yeah. I went to a club with my friends, um, um, Adu and. Um, Elsa mm-hmm. and we went clubbing and there was this girl she was eyeing me from the corner but I didn't realise now the thing is when I'm going out I don't I don't know if you're eyeing me because you know me or you're eyeing from TikTok or whatever or I don't know if you're eyeing me just because you're, you're feeling you me you fancy me so that's why when I saw her obviously I had my glasses on so she couldn't really tell if I was looking Yeah. but I was like do you know what let me just let this one slide I said hi when I walked past her mm-hmm. but when even when I said hi she it was it was very like, mm, hi. It, wasn't like it wasn't like a hi I'm interested it was like but I don't know if you like her ego got the head of yeah, her yeah she was just trying but to say cool. girls you need to relax you know mm-hmm. what I mean but yeah but a lot of the time when I go on holiday I just go to have fun I'm not really going for the for the um the the idea of looking for love do you yeah. know what I mean yeah 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 you see me yeah. when I went to DLT Malta mm. how was that how was that because I heard of it the first time I heard of it was on social media with all the stories okay because <laughs> everyone be waiting for me to talk about this shit I went to Malta I wasn't going to look for love but I knew mm. the chocolate daddies was going to be out to play hey! so I went I was honestly I feel like single life I'm tired mm. You're, you're ready to settle down at some point. I am ready to settle down that's good. eventually. Okay, cool. Obviously, I'm having a good time. I'm 24. Okay, I'm, that's I'm, good. I'm at the, you know, at age where I'm quite ripe. Yes. <laughs> ripe. I'm, a, I'm at my ripe age, but I actually yeah. would love to just come and just rub somebody's belly. Mm. And mm. Sing, yes, oh, you like belly? I love a bit of belly, oh, little that's nice. boobies. Okay. You know, just, you know, just, okay. anyways, I went out and honestly, going to DLT mm. was a very, very interesting experience okay. because... I felt like the ratio between girls to guys mm. was 
crazy. Like, you would have loved it. That was hella bitches. Hella girls. Compared to the guys, hella girls. That'd be nice. Half naked, breast bouncing. Okay. You know, Hoopa just, out, Hoopa everything. Out. You know, That's you know nice. black women I in like the sun. Yeah. You know black women yeah. in the sun is a different type mm. of... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the girls look good. Okay. So... But the girls were moving to the guys. Like, th- mm. there were so many girls. Yeah. That, and there was the small ratio of guys that mm. the, the girls were proper. Mm. They would see the guys and they'll be, you know, they'll be trying their That's thing. That's nice. It. I'm not going to lie. I like that because. Do it's, you it's, like that? Yeah. It, do you know what it is? It's a bit weird because obviously the stereotype is obviously is the man's first move. The Bible says it also. But <laughs> with that being said, it's nice to, you know, where a girl has a bit of interest as well. It's not always the guy that has to go forward. To be hunting. I mean? Yeah. I'm not used to this life, in it. Okay. Let me tell you the story of how I moved to a guy okay. at Malta. Okay, let's go. I don't usually move to guys. Because mm-hmm. I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a specific guy that I moved. Yeah. He was tall, mm. chocolate, mm. chunky monkey, mm-hmm. boobies bouncing, mm-hmm. my type of... Okay. Chocolate daddy. Sweet. Okay. We call him a big daddy. Okay. You know. Good so obviously I saw him in VIP, kept looking, looking, looking. Yeah. But he weren't saying nothing. Mm. Obviously, since I've been on social media, yeah. guys don't chat to me no mm. more. Do they find it intimidating? They apparently so. They find yeah. it intimidating. Cause I was like, bruv, the first day of DLT mm. came by. The guys were not a single number, not one mm. single number. Yeah. I'm thinking, but my boobies is out. <laughs> my bo- I'm wearing a tongue. What is going on? Not a tongue, but a tongue. A tongue. A tongue. Ah. What is going a on? Ah, like, a tongue. A tongue. A whole tongue. <laughs> like, my ass cheeks is out. And not only are they out, they are oiled. Mm-hmm. I oiled With the them. With some reflection of the melanin. I oiled then them you know. so they were shiny. What's going on yeah. in a single number? Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. I was confused. Anyway, so I, obviously I realized now Adiola Patron was talking to me saying that mm. you have to chat to the, you have to move to the guys yeah. now. So I was like, Adiola, please. Yeah. But I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it now. Shit. Yeah. So I went over to this guy mm. and I was like to him, So are you gonna keep looking at me or are you yeah. gonna come over and talk oh. to me? Oh. Obviously the Bacardi was in the system yeah, 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 I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a bit drunk. Yeah. <laughs> So he came over to talk to me yeah. and he's like, yeah, so where you from? You know, Luton. Mm. Oh my God, Luton. But you finna still be there. Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like, you know, you know, you're know, doing a lot of things. Ah! As I'm talking to him, me, I'm thinking, okay, cool. I'm in love now. Yeah. Hey, relax, easy. You know me, I'm relax. a Libra. I'll be loving in 30 seconds. I'm oh! shit, we gonna do Marie. <laughs> we finna do a fucking Marie. As I'm talking to the love of my life yeah. in front of me, mm. one girl steps, she now steps in. Cut block. She now steps in and I'm thinking... Mm. Maybe she's lost. Maybe she's a supporter. <laughs> like, she's like, <laughs> like, what's yeah. like, So she was, I said, she's been standing there for too long. Yeah. And you know when it starts getting awkward, so he's mm. not looking at her. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, mm. so I'm like, oh, is this your man? Yeah. And then she was like, well, he could be. Okay, now she needs to go, go away. She, and she, I've she's, been looking. I'm confused. I'm like, so that's not the question that's I asked. Question. I said, is that your is man? That, yes or no? Well, he could be, but this is not yes or no. What do you mean he could yeah, be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I now asked him. Mm. I'm like, is this your girl? And he's yeah. like, nah, she's not my girl. Yeah. And I said, well, now we've got that covered. Yeah. Can I have your Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> On to the next stage. And then he comes to me. He goes, I'm going to meet you in VIP mm. and we'll talk. Mm. So I've now looked down and saw that her wristband is general admission. Yikes. So you ain't finna get it with us now, are yes. you? Wow. You can't even, you hating outside the club, baby. You, you can't, can't even, even get, get in. in. <laughs> you better stay your ass in general admission, bitch. Wow. Out we go. What, what would, what would, uh, what would Kenya boy here? Gone with the wind, bitch. Get yourself out of here. But yeah, we we, wow. we exchange. Honestly, the girls are moving mm. hungry. But I love yeah. me some holiday romance, man. No, no, do you know what? It's because obviously you're not in an environment that you're you, that you're usually at. You don't see any red buses. You don't. And see... it's romantic. Have you ever like? Have you ever done romance in the sun? Do you know in, what the, it is? In, in, in the pool. Do you know what it is? I don't go out that much like that. I don't. But he's mad. You, you know need to do it. No, do you know what it is? I, I I need to do that more. Like even recently, I'm like, I really want to go to Dubai again. I love me some Dubai. Dubai is so nice. I went to Five Palm, Jamariah. Mm. That place, you see all different types of girls. You see botched ones, you see the natural ones, you see everyone. And it's, it's, it's a vibe. Like mm-hmm. even 
like everyone there, the workers, the everybody is mm-hmm, nice. Like mm-hmm. they have a, they have the live music, everything. You have the beach club, everything, and it's because everyone's there to have a good time. You're not sitting at an office desk. You everyone's there to enjoy themselves. Enjoy. So the vibe there is nice. It's right, even when it's even when it's like what eight pm mm-hmm. and it's not too hot. It's like a, just a cool, you know, summer vibe. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I feel that's what makes holidays and holiday romance different. It's because it's not your everyday life. Like some and it's people, just sexy man. I'm yeah, for it. I and you know, I've been hitting the gym as well. Yeah, honestly, so like, you've been, yeah. Honestly, when are you gonna give us the before and after? Do you know what it is. You, you have lost so much weight. Yeah, I have. Do you know what it is? Like, I, I'm, I've been going gym for well, properly mm-hmm. since like November of 2021. Mm-hmm. November, December, January about seven eight months now yeah but it took me until like january of this year to take it really seriously yeah so i started seeing more change when i started watching my calorie deficit and and making sure that i count my calories and yeah. all that because like one thing my pt my pt is the best pt i mean he's obviously the best and the thing is that like, he really takes his time with his clients because mm-hmm. he's all about seeing achievements and goals because there's one thing to be saying pick up weights and do reps of 10 reps of like 10 or whatever Mm -hmm. but are you actively doing something towards that what are you eating are you taking breaths are you taking breaks all these type of things Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean because i feel like because the gym i go to as well it's a private gym and everyone there is just doing their thing and it's it's really like it's it's clean it's modern it it makes you like want to work out out, yeah and when i'm there um yeah i've been watching my eating because with me i used to struggle to eat a lot Mm -hmm. like i would have a meal at 1 p.m and i wouldn't eat until like 11 p.m like it was really really hard but Mm -hmm. now after me doing the whole meal plan and stuff um i'm not too strict on it because obviously like i do like some pounding yam and stuff and i know sometimes when you eat pounding yam with me with the fat it goes straight to my stomach Mm -hmm. um and obviously yeah. So, <laughs> so now I'm able to balance everything out. So like panidiam is carbs. So instead of having rice or potatoes, you can have carbs, which mm-hmm. is panidiam. And then you have like your meat, which is protein. Mm-hmm. Is that fish or is it meat or is it or is it chicken? Yeah. So I like to like balance it out. So I try to have I have I try to have like about three to four meals a day. Um, but yeah, I have to stick to it. Even days when I don't want to go gym, I have to go. And the days that I don't want to go, when I go, I enjoy it. Like I'm going gym after this. Are you? Yeah, I have to. You finna work out these cocktails? Yeah. Speaking of cocktails, big up Kurt's cocktails on the fucking mix every no, time. No, these cocktails are lit, Cattrall, honestly. you've done it again. Kurt's cocktails on Instagram. Get yours now. Get yours now. Yes. I love Cattrall, man. Kurt's is always good. And the thing is, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I had to tell her to wind down on the alcohol. I'm not going to lie. The, the last couple of drinks, I said, this yeah. is too strong. That's why she was asking, do you want ash? Do you want ash? Do you want ash? Please. Yeah. Because, honestly, the last couple of episodes, I've mm-hmm. been so licked. I said, Kurt's... The percentage is too much. too much. You gotta bring that down. But honestly, Kurt's Cox so is nice. on the mix. You will get drunk. Anyways, description description in the box. See, finished. Descri- see, description in the box. box. Description. Box in the. Descri- description. Informa- well. I- info- information in the description box. <laughs> it's as well. It is well. Information in the description box. But we're gonna move on to our next yes. win or bin. We've got win or bin mm-hmm. interfaith relationships. Okay. That one is very scary. Because I know somebody mm-hmm. who is, I think she's Sikh mm-hmm. or Hindu mm-hmm. and her family are against it. And she's now with a Jamaican guy um, and her family disowned her. No. A very sad. Very sad. Yeah, very, very sad. I think what doesn't help is that he's got um, earrings of guns on his ears. <laughs> so it gets, so they think that he's obviously there. He's to giving Jar Rastafari. Right, right. Oh, right. Jesus so, um, and they're all at different directions as well. So the shit can be anywhere. But... <laughs> um, <laughs> But that's the point. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very... Um, yeah, it, I feel like in the modern world that we live in now, mm-hmm. it's slightly different. Yeah. Um, obviously, Gen Z or whatever is different. Like, I, I even sometimes see on um, Twitter people talking about, like, when they get older and they have their kids, they're going to be so happy that, like, you know, it's going to be a whole generation of, like, the way they talk and lingo and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I definitely feel culture is very 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 important to many people 100 percent. um and which is understandable but um i definitely do feel sometimes there could be a clash in some sort of way so for example um let's say there's a nigerian Mm -hmm. and they marry someone who's german and they're fully white german a lot of the time and it it seems like there's a pattern from what like i've seen and what other people have seen Mm -hmm. usually their relationship lasts if that uh person who's german is really in touch with that nigerian culture yeah i feel like if they're not 
is definitely hard. They will they they, they would want to learn because they say they love their partner as much as they can, but it, it won't won't be the same. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you're in touch with that and you're familiar with the culture, by default automatically you kind of already like merge into that as opposed to trying to learn it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really much harder, especially like when the family of your partner has never ever really come across like having German white blood in their family. Yeah. It's, it's very new. And it's not like a disrespect thing. It's just a thing of they have to get used to it. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like there is, it is a long way to go for many, many people. I mean, I don't have anything wrong with it. I feel like, inter- I mean, for me personally speaking, when it comes to um, faith, mm-hmm. um, my partner has to be Christian. Agreed. It, it, yeah. it just has to be. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Like, it just has to be. Like, my children will grow up learning Christianity. They will know who God is. They will mm-hmm. go to Sunday school, do all these things. We'll pray yeah. in the house. We'll have communion, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Not just because... Obviously, I'm very grateful for my parents bringing me up in that way. And that's mm-hmm. why, like, I can stand firm and say that I know God for myself. But I feel like I, I want to genuinely coach them in the way that I feel was right. Especially yeah. in the world we live in now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good that it has a sort of disability. Obviously, when they get older... Like, obviously, they're free to make their own decisions. But with my blessing and my hope and prayer that they still stay in that way. But Agreed. that's just that's just my preference. Agreed. And the thing is, it's not even a thing. I Like I said, I mm. I think I've mentioned that I've, I dated an a Asian guy. Mm. I dated a Muslim guy. How was that? He was amazing. Yeah. He was very rich. Oh, okay. So he was, he was, I was very jackpot. well looked after. I really liked him. Not just jackpot, but I really, mm. really liked him. Yeah. He could not take the relationship further mm. because his parents could not, he... His parents would never allow yeah. him to marry a, a a black Christian woman. Yeah. He wouldn't anyone that is not within the 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 Muslim mm. um is community. it Pun, Punjab, is it Punjabi? Punjabi Punjab, Punjabi one, one community, yeah? yeah. Punjabi no way. So it's not even I don't mm. I found it very weird when people yeah. feel if they're like I can't marry anyone except the Christian. Mm. But a lot of other communities they're like, listen, if they're yeah. not Muslim, if they're not it's not, if they're not Islamic and if they're not a yeah. race mm. I'm sorry we they can't, just can't run. do it we they can't, can't do run. it and you know what the thing what is mean? like even though it can be quite hurtful yeah. because obviously you feel like you're not um, you're not being appreciated and respected because of your race or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be unfortunately as hard as it sounds you can't really change people's views yeah that's just that's them. what it is yeah. do you know what I mean and yes you may love you may love your partner, but at the same time, spiritually, there's that covering that you need from both parties yeah. of their of their families and parents. Absolutely. And even though it's you and him against the world, at the same time, what's going to happen when it's time for your kid's 10th birthday and it's only you and, and, and him and a few of your friends from work? Mm-hmm. God forbid, that's not going to happen, but... You, you need that that financial pers- that, that for me, stability. Yeah, I feel like the general. For, for, we're coming from people who are very invested into our religion. Yes, yeah, I'm a. You guys know me. I'm for Jesus. Yes. I'm a Christian Amen. babe. Rabbi There's some people who Christian are. Rabbi. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. There's some people who are Christian, mm. but they don't mind branching out and dating yeah. other. Yeah. At one point, I was. I was. I could have. I could have seen myself marrying a Muslim. Mm. I could have seen myself marrying. Um, any other any yeah. other religion yeah i feel like now mm. um like you said the upbringing but i also need somebody it's it's like i, I wouldn't call my religion like a hobby but it's something mm. i'm passionate about it's mm. like out like it's like part of my culture yeah and i would want somebody to embrace it and be as passionate as it yeah, as me yeah so it's a part of my identity yeah. like it's just a, compa- it's a mm. compatibility thing mm. but for people who want to date into into faithfully mm. Big up you lot. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? If that's no, it's hard. It's do, tough. It's, it's tough. It's not easy. Like you could be speaking in tongues and you'd be shouting to and the rooftop. Because basically there's, to rooftop. there's a thing called prayer watches. Yeah? yeah. Where like you pray at a certain time of the day. Yeah. Um, like for example, I think sometimes at like 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. In the spiritual realm, sometimes the devil's actually be cooking up rubbish. Yeah. Right? So that's the moment you then speak in tongues and speak to the realms. Praying, right? Yeah. You could be doing that and then you'll see your boyfriend sleeping, downstairs and be like, oh, excuse no. me. <laughs> what monkey noise is you making upstairs? Do you know what I mean? You can't they have that. They, they won't understand it. They won't understand it. But like, if you have somebody who, like the thing is with me, the reason why my partner has to be, you know, even more Christian than me is it is because I need that balance. I need yeah. that coach. I, I need that accountability. I need that yeah. because I grew up in a Christian household um, and I want my children and my partner to also have that as well. 100%. And I feel like me, biblically speaking, obviously everyone each of their own, but I feel like when you have that spiritual covering, in your household your safe haven Mm -hmm. you know you will flourish and thrive under god's um commandments and ways and you know some people don't like that that's fine if some people want to go and branch to something else that's fine that's fine but you do you you do you baby all right we are gonna move on it's cnt baby 
Cool. Okay, we have a very special segment okay. on this show okay. in which mm-hmm. we test your cultural intelligence. Oh, here we go. So! Oh, my days. Okay. Guys, we, wa- <laughs> we like... We haven't done this one in a while. Yikes. Okay, here we go. We've got 10 questions. Oh, okay, go on. We're going to test your intelligence and we call this segment... Okay. Are you smart? Well, I did go to uni. I actually do have a degree. So let's see how that He's works. He's like, you smart? All right, go on, let's go. Are you smart? Yes. <laughs> Are you shard? <laughs> Are you shard? Somewhat, let's go. Let's go. Listen, you got 10 questions. All right. You can only give me one answer. Okay. Oh. You can't say Bobby, Susie, Adam, um, Okay, all right, um, okay, um, all right. Um, 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 you can only give me one. All right, here we go, here we go. Right. Are you ready? Go. Question number all right, one. go on. British rapper Sims also appears in which UK series? Is that Lil Sims? Yes. Oh, she. Eh? Oh, oh, wait. You, oh, she. Oh, she. Wait, there's, there's, um. It's not a series, but it's a. F- Venom. Next. That answer is extremely incorrect. Uh, oh, 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 uh, mm. She played the character Shelly in Top Boy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't watch Top Boy, but I know that she was in. But oh, yeah. Question number two. Okay, go on, next one. Which female artist has the most entries in the UK Billboard Top 100? Which UK female artist? Not UK, which female artist of all time, UK, US, Dubai, Asia, has the most entries in the history of Billboard Top 100? Okay, I think just one artist, not not a group, just one. One. Female artist. artist. Okay. Okay, Billboard 100s, you said? Yeah, Billboard Top 100s. Um, I'm going to say Rita Ora. That answer is extremely incorrect. Okay. Yeah. The answer is Nicki Minaj. I knew it, but I didn't say it. Nicki Minaj owns the Guinness World Record for having the most entries on the Billboard 100. Do you know what it is? Because every now and then she has a little feature here and there, I'm like, oh, is she still raining like that? I mean, she'll always rain. We do not, we do not do this for ourselves <laughs> at this place. Oh, you're we a bob. Do not, listen, I'm a bob. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, yeah, all right. Question number three. Matilda, Fantastic Fox, Fantastic Mr. Fox, mm. and the twits were written by what author? Rodo. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. You are correct. That's right. What currency is used in South Africa? Oh, rind, 30 rind, 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 rind. Tell me I'm right. Rind. Rind. That is correct. That's right. 30 rind. The answer is South African rind. Say again. Rind. I remember all oh, when it's wait quick one yeah uh-huh. when they tried to cancel me for for do this a uh, video mm-hmm. uh, one dance video basically I was saying I said you see for all the rats who are coming for me mm-hmm. and saying that I copy someone's culture even though obviously I did enough obviously I, I said that I wasn't yeah um yeah you can go to hell then someone made a video they were like he called us rats he called us rats <laughs> I love my South Africans you guys you you're real ones anyway so I'm gonna stand up <laughs> question number five who discovered the laws of gravity. Oh, the Big Bang Theory. Whoa. <laughs> is that your final answer? Yeah, it's... Uh, the Einstein... Uh, Ein, Einstein, Ein, Einstein? You're not buying it, are you? Is that your final answer? Yes. That answer... <laughs> is incorrect. It's very incorrect. Yes, I do. In fact, they should take away your degree. <laughs> The answer is Sir Isaac Newton. Who's that? The man who discovered gravity. Is he a scientist or something? He's somebody, boy. Oh, okay. He's somebody, boy. Something next time. All right. Next. Six. Which of these yeah. is legal in the UK? Mm. A, being drunk in a pub. Mm. B, sticking a stamp upside down. C, carrying a plank of wood. What's legal in the UK? So what's illegal what's in illegal? the UK? Okay, yeah. first one, no. Second one is plank of wood. 
yeah, sticking a sticking a stamp upside down. C carrying a plank of wood. Second one. Sticking a stamp upside down. Yes. That is incorrect. Huh? The answer is C. And according to Section 54 of the Metropolitan Police Act 1839, it's an offence to carry a plank across the pavement in London. And you get a maximum fine of £500. So when all these builders are doing, excuse me, coming through... Carrying a plank across. Maybe uh, if you drag uh, oh, it. Oh, okay. Then but put it on the shoulder, it's fine. Well, I don't know. Well, something is wrong here. Something is wrong. So, this, so we've got question number seven. Seven, okay. Question number seven. Which one of these is the highest grossing movies? Ooh. A, Titanic. Mm. B, Avatar. Ooh. C, Avengers. Ah, uh, um, Atlantis, no, not, not Atlantis. Avatar, that can go. Uh-huh. So it's not Titanic because Titanic, Titanic's one of them films. You know, like how Mariah Carey always all up for Christmas every year, mm-hmm. and it always gets a sort of traction. Then you have, you said Avengers, as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Avengers. So you are gonna choose Avengers as the top grossing movie. Yep. That is incorrect. <laughs> Is wrong. The answer is the Avatar. Av- really? Avatar lifetime grossing was 2.8. Is this billion or million? Billion. What? Avengers got 2.7 billion and Titanic got 2.2 billion grossing. Wow. wow. I thought, cause you know Marvel with their money and stuff. Yeah, Marvel do got, they do got money. Wow. But then again, apparently Avatar's having a new film. Yes, that it's is, coming out. We finna be there. going to go crazy. We finna be there. Wow. We finna be there. Definitely. That's crazy. So, question number, was it eight? Yeah. What is Beyonce's most stream song of all time? <laughs> Wait. Her most stream song. Of all time. (sighs) Aha, this is simple. This is easy. You can't chat me. Single ladies. Find me on it. Are you sure? Yeah. That is very incorrect. Hey, 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 Relax. Relax. The answer is Halo. Remember those walls I built? Well, baby, they're tumbling down. And they didn't even put up a fight. Give us phone calls. They didn't even make a sound. I found a way to let you in. But I never really had a doubt. Standing in the light of your halo. I got my angel now. Then what? It's like I've been awakened. Every room I had to break it. It's the risk that I'm taking. I ain't never gonna shut you out. Every round looking out. I'm surrounded by your embrace. Baby, Baby, I can, can see your yeah, halo. You know you're my saving, saving grace. What are you? You're you're everything, everything I need and more. Why are you? It's written it's all, all over your face. Baby, Woo! I can feel your halo. Baby, I'm fading your halo. Halo. I can see your halo. 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 I can feel your halo. Halo. Wow. Listen, sign me! I mean, I sing at church. Sign me! Yeah. Me and he's duo. Do you know what yeah. you can say? You're yeah. you giving us some. I do everything. You were giving us vocals. All round up. All round up. So it's Halo the whole time. It's Halo. I really thought it was Single Ladies because I know, like. Single Ladies was probably, but it was Halo is the most streamed wow. song. Her most streamed song of all Crazy. time. And she's so still making money from it, you know? Of course she is. When she sleeps, she breathes coins. Oh, Beyonce. Must be nice. My, my queen, Beyonce. Mm. Okay, what we question number nine? Nine. Name the voice mm. of Love Island. Name the Love Island voiceover. Has it changed? No, no, they changed the presenter. Nick, 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 um, Nick, Nick, um, Nick, 
Nick, uh, Nick, Nick. Ooh, that stutter was mad. Sorry, Nick Grimshaw. Nick Grimshaw. It has to be Nick Grimshaw or someone. Hi, hi. No, is Nick Grimshaw? Gr is Grim Gr 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 Nick Grimshaw? Is 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 Nick Grimshaw? It has to be. You cannot be chatting me. It has to be. Fight me on it. That is incorrect. <laughs> It's Ian Sterling. That's the one. He's married to, to Laura Whitmore. Yes, Laura Whitmore. Oh, so who's the groom? Oh, 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 he's the presenter for some um, radio. Oh, how can I get a mixed up? But he looks like a Nick Grimshaw. How can someone look like a Grim Nick Shaw? Is his name Nick Grimshaw? Something like that. Oh, my days. Oh, Ian. No, yes, now it makes. Oh, I thought it was Nick Grim Okay, oh, okay. Oh, oh. Are you ready well, for the last one? I'm ready for the last one. I'm ready for the last one. Here we go. Here we go. I'm still disappointed about that Halo one. I thought it was actually single ladies, but anyway, let's go. Number ten. Final, this. final question. All right. Who is the owner mm. of Nike? I think you should like put these like questions to a close because I feel like at this point you just come to just cause violence and just make me look dumb. Who is it? Who's he? Who, who, who are they? Phil Knight. Who's that? The owner of Nike. Oh. He's got a really cool book. I've got it. Oh. He's the founder of Nike. Founder. He founded Nike. Really? Right. Oh wow. Okay. And he's. Yes. I think you got like what three out of ten. Well, do you know what they say? It's what? not about taking part that matters. <laughs> That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. That was too bad. <laughs> that was too bad. Well, do you know what? It was something. You tried. Yeah. It's about you. You, you participated. That's yeah. All that matters. That's it. I took part. You participated. Yes. <laughs> Hot Topics of the Week, baby. All right, we are going to move on. We have our Hot Topics okay. of the Week. Okay, of course, cool. it has been a chaotic week. Yeah. And we're going to just go straight into the into the nuggets. You know, I haven't spoken about Love Island on this show before. You know, it's so funny. I've actually never in my life watched one episode of it before. Yeah, the reason why not because I feel like I'm better than anyone because that's what everyone says but the reason why is because I just don't understand the concept of meeting a random stranger and you're sleeping in my bed and then you don't know what soul ties they have I'm finished you don't know what they carry not the soul ties my child I am not coming sleep in my bed listen please we don't need all your philosophical <laughs> concepts we are just here to have a good time it's entertainment when you're overthinking overthinking things you're over, over but, processing it but you know what it is like my whole Twitter feed my whole FYP Love Island debrief, debrief. I don't want to debrief. Give me content to you watch. You need to jump on it because Everyone says you, that. listen, you're you're leaving yourself out for absolutely Everyone no reason. That. Love Island is phenomenal. I feel like Love Island mm. is so good, not just because of the show itself, but because mm. of the community mm. it builds. You're part of a conversation. Do, what what series do you prefer? Do you really like the series? This series is really good, surprisingly. Really? Okay. You know, every time we're always like, every season we're like, it's not as good as the last mm. season. It's not mm. good. I feel like this summer was mm. better than the shit they gave us in the winter. Okay. That, Apparently, yeah, people say the winter one's not giving as much as it usually does as, no. well, as, as the summer ones. This one, I feel like they only had one or two winter Love Islands. Okay. This one is so fucking messy. Wow. It's too good. Do you know what I'm waiting for? What are you waiting for? Bun Love Island, Big Brother needs to come back. Uh, yes. If Big Brother yes. get me on, because apparently uh, alleged rumors saying that they're moving on to ITV2. If Big Brother comes back, it's all over for you. Me in that house. Who would you like to see in Big Brother in the UK? Um, because you, you know what it is. I don't know if they're gonna bring back the celebrity one or the civilian or if uh -huh. it's both. Um, if the person I want to see in that house, well, me, of course, mm -hmm. number one, of course. Um, definitely, I would like to see. I'm trying to think, if it's a celebrity one. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I'm not trying to toot my own horn again, but toot too. I feel like I actually could be in the celebrity one as well. But with that being said, I think if I'm gonna be in that house, I think I really wanna be in that house with someone like um Do I even know any celebrities like that? Mm hmm Who is I'm trying to think who In the UK. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Ooh, do you know who will be who will bang? I thought, if you're gonna say who I'm gonna say, I have someone in mind. I have someone in mind. Who's, who's the person? She's she's hitting three. Three, two, one. Okay, three. wait, I'm gonna Okay, <laughs> cool, okay, cool. <laughs> Three, Three, two, two one. one. Renee. It's so fabulous. Ah! Oh my god! I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. What? Shit! They need to get a 
up, big brother. No, no, I tell you, Renee needs to go in that house. She needs to go. Renee needs to go in that house. If her and her bonnet, she needs to get in that house. She needs to get when I tell on you, Big Brother. When I tell you, Renee. Renee. I need all day. Renee. Renee. I need all day. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I need Mr. Fabulous that, on there. That would yeah. create TV gold. Yep. Yeah. Quality content. I'm telling you for real. Quality content. Let's look at it. Call Renee problematic all that you want. Yeah. But every single person who's chatting crap always comes back to see what's going on. Literally. So when she did that story, I done oh, doggy position for one whole year. I done doggy position for one whole year. Big girl like me. <laughs> that like to fuck. <laughs> nah, get on the fucking. Even the Americans are on that sound now. It's gone international. Get her. On get that her on that show. Brother. I would. Wa- the thing is, no. this is the thing. There's some people that are. Are, are problematic yeah but they make good tv no they make like, good tv for example like when we're talking about love and hip-hop mm. people like tommy yeah people like jocelyn yeah In jocelyn life, they're very toxic people but oh my god no, the thing is people say they're toxic, but they love it they, they love, love it. it they make they make the tv companies make yeah. have money yeah. yeah you know what i mean 100 i would love it honestly i would be the first one that honestly listen once, yeah. those, once those doors open Listen, who is the who is the correspondent of Big One? Get Renee on that shit. Get Renee on that show. Get motherfucking Renee. I will co-sign it. You heard it here on Listen, CO motherfucking no, team. Get honestly, Renee that would on be Big Brother. Lit. That would be so lit. Honestly, Big Brother for me, what I love about it is that uh-huh. you know how you have some shows that you maybe do Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Big uh-huh. Brother is Monday to Sunday. Every you day. Have a full episode, an hour, every single day of the week. And mm. and when you used to go on the Big Brother website, you could see um them to what they were doing within the 24 hours really yes yeah, so you can watch them on the camera it's so that that place wow. listen, big brother is big brother and you know what some people say that like they can't they, they don't know what to do without a phone i think i'll be fine with it i think they'll finish i, I think, think be, because you know what it happened maybe the first couple of days they'll be like but you're always doing something you're always doing a task or an activity and i feel like what people say like um if you've got asylum they had one um thing called locked in yes i remember um that would be six ago one actually but what happened was people said how when you're in that show when you're in that house like when you're just gonna be surrounded by people you forget that you're really, really on your phone even me doing social media you'll be very surprised i'm hardly on my phone i probably will post like for instagram or tiktok but mm-hmm. a lot of the time i'm not on my phone a lot of time you will not find me on my phone mm-hmm. because when, when it's your job and you're literally doing it constantly even though yes it is rewarding you want time off it and I feel like being in a house with no social media, no hearing of the outside world, I feel like in a way it's also like therapy. Yeah. You get away from all of that. Especially if social media is your life, the best thing. The best thing. Listen, I'm telling you, I love I love me a good social media mm-hmm. break, but God damn, I love my phone. I love my people. I can't help it. I don't know how. But yeah, get Renee. Speaking of Love Island. Mm. You need to jump I might on give it. it a go. I'm, next week, I'm going to bring someone that actually watches it so we can have a fucking I might thing. give it a go. I might bring one of the Love Island lots here. You might as well. I think, because I, I want to have a conversation. A really good conversation. Because obviously, want, they, would, they would have seen, they obviously, they experienced it and they yeah, also seen I what need, it is like I need the coming from... Know, guys, I fucking got you. But let's move on to the next hot mm-hmm. new releases. We've got Drake's new album. So Drake okay. has released his follow-up of last year's certified lover boy mm. and it's called Honestly Never Mind. Yeah. So the surprise album received many mixed reviews due to mm. its smooth dance beat genre, which is very different to his usual hip-hop mm. style. Did you yeah. watch, did you listen to it i've only heard snippets from tiktok sounds of course um i just when it comes to artists i'm not really that invested i feel like when it comes to listening to it it's like people can sit through a whole album i'm mm-hmm. not like that it's a thing where like it just so happens that i hear the song and mm-hmm. then i just hear songs after that i don't sit through a whole album like i'm yeah. it's boring but i feel like drake has been wanting to make music like this for a long time and i feel like he's very in touch with the uk a lot yeah and i feel like all the girls who want to get white girl wasted it, that's their answer yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. and I feel like now him and Beyonce because they both released dance tracks yeah. I feel like they are now paving the way and opening the doors for, now everybody now wants to do dance yes 100 do you know what I think so, I feel like I feel like Drake is do, I feel like Drake is trying to become mm. a superstar mm. you see this is this is the thing you can be a superstar in the hip hop community yeah but the uh, but the dancehall community don't know who the fuck you are. Yeah. You could be a super like dancehall music. Mm. Like when we we could be in the club. Like I went to um I went to Monkey House yesterday, mm. and they were playing this. Ins- ins- yeah. If you see the way the white people were jumping, yeah. Like they, I said I've never heard this song in my fucking life. Mm. Music is universal. Yeah. I feel like Drake is trying to become a universal artist. Yeah. Where in every single genre, mm. whether that's American hip hop, mm. UK dancehall, mm. d- uh, dance music. Whatever it's called, yeah. they know Drake. Yeah. That's the, that's a that's, skill yeah. to have. That the many only person don't that's have. done that is Beyonce. Look how Beyonce, yeah. she's not just R and B singer. Mm. 
Beyonce has done reggae. She's, she's done, done country. country. She's, she's done, done rock. She's, she's done, done everything. Every pop. Fu- and do you know who's also doing that as well? Who? That many people don't give her enough accolades. Brie Runway. Brie Runway they right there. I this is a Brie Runway stand account because I'm going to be pissed off. Listen. Don't Brie start Brie with Runway. Don't start with her because I'm going to be listen, angry. No, that's my girl right there. Don't Brie start with because I'm angry. Is literally, she's amazing. No, I'm going to tell you something about Brie. What people don't realise here. Yeah? Brie, she's killing it right. She's in Paris and like, she's just killing it. Literally, she can do ballads. Mm-hmm. She does pop. She does hip hop. She does rap. She does rock. She does everything. And that's the thing, which is it's a skill that not many people can carry. Yeah. And I feel that's what makes her so different. And I feel like that's why she's got such a good um, reach in terms mm-hmm. of her audience and her demographic. Because I remember I watched her twice when she was in London, her first ever show in London. And then also watched her when she was in LA. And seeing how she's grown and everything, it's just amazing. She's a black Ghanaian Brit. And she has actually grown and morphed into this amazing big pop star mm-hmm. that many people can't grasp or ever get. And mm-hmm. I feel like, yes, okay, cool, it's nice to have your niche, but for you to have versatility, that's a skill it's that not difficult. many people can 100%, have. 100%, I agree. Yeah, 100%. I agree. To be a versatile artist mm-hmm. is very, very difficult. Very difficult. And I feel like that's exactly the region that Drake is trying to get into. Yes. Black people are not going to understand it. Mm. But you see those white people. You see, remember remember that song? I don't know if you watch... Um, Real House of Atlanta. Yeah. Mm. Don't be tired for the party. Oh, oh, oh. Don't be tired for the. Listen, you. Well, tell you let me say something. Let me say something. Mm-hmm. White people, white Caucasians, the Caucasians in this house, yeah. they have money. They got money. Treat them well because they can push your stuff to the brim. Mm-hmm. Drake knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He can make. If if black people want to diss his stuff, good luck to you. This wasn't the for whites, us. The, yeah. It's not for us. The white people will be doing uns uns in the clubs in central in London. Club, yeah, that's the first thing I said. I said this yeah. album ain't for us. It's not for us. But so for the whites, they it. love it. Yeah, and they, they will rinse it. You see Ray? Mm-hmm. You know, go Ray. She does dance, yeah? Mm-hmm. Dance music. Mm-hmm. Her music always hits the charts because she reaches that market. She reaches even that, that region. Even that Charlie X. Charlie XCX. Yeah, yeah I all remember the time. when I was at the train. Mm. I, I was on my way home. Mm. And I was just seeing, that it was just all gays. Mm. Like, one, you know the girls? Mm. Makeup, mm. hair, um, fishnet tops. And mm. I was just thinking, now I know damn sure it mm. is not LGBTQ yeah. month. Mm. We are in March. <laughs> <laughs> I just came in What y'all do that? What y'all do there? What y'all do there? <laughs> And then, and then next thing you know, I'm here, yeah, Charlie X. I said, yeah. listen, mm. all white people. Yeah. I must have been the only black person on the train, yeah. yeah. No, I for said, real. Listen. If you, if you can really master the craft of really catching the, the, the white um market, you yeah. have made it. Yeah, she has. Someone like that. I'm trying to think who else is. is um Thingy did that once. Usher has done that years ago. Yeah, when everybody was on the David Guetta thing. Oh, any, and if you actually, I think about this the other day. Any every single artist who's collabed with David Guetta mm-hmm. has not once failed. Ka- Kelly Rowland yeah. with Commander and When Love Takes Over. Mm-hmm. Usher with that song Without You. Um every person who does anything regarding David Guetta always hits the charts. Yeah. Because dance will always be dance on music, yeah. Becky Hill, who was on The Voice and she's now won a Brit Award this year, constantly hitting the mm-hmm. charts. Ray hitting the charts. Jax Jones hitting the charts. Uh, Mabel hitting the charts Tenny Temper oh, yeah. doesn't make as much music as he used to do before but when he was doing it in his time hitting the charts mm-hmm. even Dizzy Rascal oh yeah he did the liquid thing if you're yeah. not doing nothing let's fly away holla away get away it's a bit of a job babe you can do what you want to baby I'm you know, dead when I tell you like dance in this country it, America's slowly getting into it slowly and mm. now I feel like for a lot of Americans this new Drake album is going to be like a new avenue for many of them because all they know is trap and future Yeah, and it gets a bit boring like let's do something else but that's the thing I like about the UK the UK is very mixed like you have dance you have hip hop you have all these things and I feel like now for Drake it's definitely a way of him opening doors to like new ears mm-hmm. as well definitely 100% I love that. And mm. you know what? Yeah, a lot of people, they don't understand it. But even, mm. and funny enough, yeah, as Drake came with him, his thing, mm. Beyonce a couple days later yeah. came with her She team. goes, you're too slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, she can. I feel like there's definitely there's <coughs> definitely a direction that that you know when you mm. know when the market is moving. Yeah. And the moving the shakers know something. Yeah. That the rest of us don't. Know. No, they don't know. They're doing that's something. Them. They're something doing something. Cooking. We don't know, but they know, and they're Maybe doing something. Maybe there's a new festival that's coming something. Out that we don't know something. something. Or there's a new record. Yeah. Not gonna lie, Push. when you say release that song, I was like, mm, I'm not sure. But you have to start. You can't listen to it sitting down. You have to stand up. You have to stand like up in the boogie. gym. You don't break my soul. No, no. Yeah, you don't yeah, break my yeah, soul. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody. You have to get up. Like, is it again? It's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. But you know, the girls are gays in the days. They would love that. But 
even if you're not part of the community, the song, I was listening to the lyrics mm -hmm. and the lyrics are very, it's very liberating. Yeah. And it relates to me because I remember when I was working at, um, I'm, I'm, I won't say the name because obviously like, I have a good relationship with them and um, they really helped me a lot. But when I was working with this company, <laughs> at, at one time when I was in college, like in my broke days, I literally took off the apron and I said, I'm out. And literally it was like a main character moment mm -hmm. because I was so disrespected in that place. There was a lot of racism. There was a lot of rubbish. Obviously not the company themselves, but unfortunately the people I was working with and it just wasn't helping at all. And I, I was in college and I was trying to get into uni. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. And that moment was like, I just quit my job. I'm not doing this nine to five. I can sleep, I can sleep at night knowing that obviously I've got a good paycheck coming in. Obviously I don't know what's going to happen after that paycheck comes, but for now it will last me until God knows when. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I feel like she released it just at the right time. Like obviously we're in summer now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, don't go be quitting your job willing the Leo. Please, but Beyonce, I don't know why you said that because how are we going to afford your tickets for concerts now? Did you really think about that Beyonce? She didn't think. She didn't think. She didn't think. Bart, I'm still going to sing it. I would. I think <laughs> everyone says that you need to go to a Beyonce concert once in your life. I, I went I to. Like I. Do you know what it is? Mm -hmm. I'm really upset because even right now, even up till today, I still watch these live performances on YouTube, and I'm mm -hmm. so annoyed because when she released self-titled Beyonce in 2014, I think I was in year nine and I didn't get money to go. My mom said she's not going anywhere because obviously you don't have the money for it. And literally, I was. Li I'm not going to say how I lived, but it was really the way she performed was so close to my house. And I would just think about because basically she was releasing her. It was like the coming of. Beyonce Carter so she did that whole like London Queen type theme because she, she was sponsored by O2 mm -hmm. so she performed it in the O2 whatever and um, it was like literally the best thing like ever but I did watch her on the run tour two in 2018 amazing and she is the only person that I can say that I've literally watched and not regretted pain absolutely wow. when I tell you this girl her, her, her breath control her stamina I don't know how she does it but every single time she performs without fail she always pr performs and does to the best of her ability the best the best the best listen i'm gonna watch beyonce man i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna go but the next guys, one i'm there I'm front de stage we are there i'm there listen i don't know who's gonna sponsor this one but we have to be there please. listen i don't know if it's title live nation one of you guys hello take us there front row seats hello thank you and with that being said we are gonna close the show yes. but i want to say a big thank you to mr ahiz thank you for, for coming me. where do we find you sir so you can find me on instagram at ahiz ufua which is e-h-i-z-u-f-u-a-h you can find me on tiktok at underscore ahiz which is e-h-i-z and youtube e-h-i-z Per and with that being yes. said thank you so much for another episode and guys thank you for one year man i appreciate That's you guys amazing. i love you guys Here's to another good motherfucking year, man. That's right. With some more crazy people. That's right. Cheers. Cheers. We out, man. We'll see you next week with another bad boy or bad girl. Enjoy the rest of your week. And we out. Right. L.